Got about fifteen thousand so far. Oh my gosh. Just uh, kidding. Yes. There's just like this. Yeah, you know, there's a handful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, so, uh, what are some of the main differences between uh, animal uh, and human anatomy? Um, a lot of it's proportion, obviously, and shape like that. Um, <clears throat> I've actually found that there's more similarities than differences uh, in my own work, but I'm not in no means like an anatomy master. I would say um, I am the type of artist that has. Um, researched what I need at the time. And then I've built up a visual library from that. And that's kind of how I work. And then when I need something different, I'll pull up another piece of anatomy. Mm -hmm. I'm in no way, uh, um, like I don't do anatomy studies. I haven't, I haven't invested as much time into that as other artists. So um, I think that in my studies and the amount that I've done, um, I've found way more similarities. And it's, it's helped me a lot because then it's like if there's an area and I'm not sure, like, well, I'm just sketching or drawing or something, mm -hmm. um, I know that I can pull on the anatomy that I do know and uh, the basic rules, and yeah. principles, and I can, you know, fake it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can uh, get, I can get away with stuff. I'd say you don't have time to research. But. Right. I'd say you've been pretty fairly successful so far. So keep up I'm the fooled, good. Keep up the good I've, faking. Yeah, I've fooled everybody so far. So. <laughs> no, I, I just don't i don't like uh, you know looking at other artists like um terrell whitlatch or even, even some of the some of the faculty i teach with I'm like they're masters like they know what they're doing i'm i'm attempting right yeah like, I, I know design and i can i can play with shapes and that kind of thing but um man i was terrible in my anatomy classes too because like i could not remember the names of things and like <laughs> my, my, my students see that sometimes too i'm like I'll space out on the name of something and they'll correct me. And right. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that thing, this yeah, shape. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> turbo loity not a foid. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you want to pop this shape out and they know that like, like, oh, he doesn't know that muscle. So they'll type it in the chat. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Calling me out on my lack of, like, I'll know the major groups, but then like, right. yeah, yeah. So um, I think that, looking at things a lot i've always just been visual but i've never sat down and was like i'm gonna know the name of this mm -hmm. or or these subgroups or whatever um i'm probably making a lot of people like log out of the stream now like that was a, <laughs> that was a joke this guy's what the hell <laughs> yeah no i, I mean, mean he know what he's talking about. I, I think that uh you know if as long as you understand how the anatomy works you don't necessarily have to know like yeah all yeah. of the technical names for everything granted think, it, it probably would help but yeah yeah no i'm not saying like what i'm doing is okay i'm saying that um it's makes it makes it a lot harder to communicate for sure <laughs> and then if somebody's telling you something like oh you should make such and such muscle group um a lot put more gravity into that and less less tension or whatever i'm like mm, i'm gonna look at that later <laughs> right i'll look that one up when i get home <laughs> <laughs> or you whip your phone out like you got something more important to do and you're really just googling a <laughs> googling up a muscle group yeah right <laughs> i actually had a i had a really good uh a couple good apps like anatomy apps on my phone that i looked at a lot and i started memorizing some stuff but um i can i can tell you how to sculpt it i can tell you where something goes but right. i just can't tell you what it's called right H hence the um the uh, creature creature design <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know man uh, whatever you're doing it's working so it, uh, keep keep that up, man. It's like a um, I, it all started with drawing. Where like I never got, I never got anatomy books or like um, I had zoo books, mm -hmm. and I, that was a missed opportunity. I probably should have read that more than look at it. But that's just what I did. Like I just I I looked at things a lot more than um, actually reading what what it was. And like, <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to find an excuse for myself. I don't have an excuse. I should do my homework. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's all good, man. I uh, well, you know, if if you are a horrible artist, then that would be one thing, right? But you you find so here's what I think is that like you you've got down like your design principles, right? And that's what really comes out in in your art, and th that's what that's personally what I see is that like you know the rhythm and balance and and shape language and form like all of that stuff is super super solid and that's what makes your mm -hmm. art strong you know 
thanks. Yeah, I um, a lot of it uh, too early on was through imitation, like when I was drawing and learning how to draw. And there was like some key artists that I looked at that are not really in our industry, but uh, I forgot the, uh, the illustrator's name or the author of the Berenstain Bears. Mm. There was a there was a book that he put out of just dinosaurs. And I loved how he drew certain shapes in the dinosaurs. And like, I just imitated that when I was really little. And I still make some of those shapes today, like how they how he would do talons and how he would do um, uh, feet. I right. felt like that it was super grounded. It had a lot of um, great like weight to it, and that's just what I imitated right. you know, when I was little. And like uh, James Gurney, you follow him too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it was like it was just a a pattern that I did when I was little, and I actually got burned by an artist once, and, and, and they had every right to be kind of upset with me because I sent them like uh, basically plagiarism when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they how old I was, or like I mean, I was old enough to know better, but I was still doing it. Sure. And I was like, I wanted. I was so proud that I was able to like imitate what they did. And uh-huh. um, yeah, they're like, uh, this is just you straight up copied me. Like you need to do something <laughs> original. And it was a really motivational thing that they said, but I was hurt at the time. I'm like, what? Like, but I copied you. I did so good. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, find your own thing, find your own voice, learn from it, but don't, you know. Yeah don't make that a habit don't become that kind of an artist and then like once i was over my sadness I, I <laughs> two years later <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, pick a pencil back up a couple of years later and then i was like wait you know what like that was actually a really great thing to say so yeah it should be that's what i should be doing so did you ever reach back out to him and be like hey thanks for getting my no. <laughs> face in line dude <laughs> no no um i i just uh kind of kept doing my thing and, and yeah or tried to and, and learned from from imitation. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's just like with musical instruments, right? Like you, you learn that way too. Like you, you get a songbook or something and you copy some other thing that's been written. And I should save this for my computer yeah. has a meltdown. Save it. <sighs> um, I have a bunch of files named this PM 3D Sphere 3D. <laughs> <laughs> like <a library laughs> At mode. least it's not like... Um... Uh, lizard guy final lizard guy final oh. final lizard yeah, guy I have, the, I have those too yeah <laughs> really really I mean, final especially like client work you know yeah. when there's like tons of feedback i'm like okay this is the last one and then they have feedback and you're like okay final final seriously <laughs> seriously <laughs> yeah <laughs> um all right you ready for some more questions yeah absolutely all right uh what's your opinion on crunch time how do you mm. deal with like so how do you deal with it like um how do you stay sane? How do you prep yeah. for it if you know it's coming? That kind of thing. What's your take? I think the, the for me anyway, uh, the biggest thing that I've had to deal with is just making sure that you know my spouse is okay with it. Mm. Um, and I I've been very lucky in that um, she works in the industry as well. And like right now she's doing seventy two hour weeks. Um, wow. So that's, yeah, that's like 12 to 14 hours a day. So I don't see her until about 11 o'clock. And then she works Saturday until about 11 o'clock. Uh, it's um, really, really handy to have somebody who understands yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And I didn't think about that. I didn't like plan that out. It was just, I met her in school and um, rest is history kind of thing. And, yeah. and she's understanding of it because she has to go through it too. Yeah. Um, I think that if this is something that you love, and you're enjoying, uh, and, and you're lucky enough to, to be working on a project that's similar to your tastes, um, then it's not going to feel too much like work, in right. my opinion. Um, I mean, honestly, especially, uh, I don't know about everybody else, but like, as much as I loved working with my dad in construction, and I love my dad, uh, construction wasn't for me, and neither was retail. Like, retail was a pain, pain in the butt. And um, I viewed all that as work sitting at a desk sipping a a coffee or um and you know and and modeling uh even if it's not uh, a creature and i'm doing something like uh vehicles or whatever whatever's needed on the project i mean shoot uh on evolve like i spent a good amount of time making trees you know but those are some damn sexy trees though (laughs) i mean seriously (laughs) right (laughs) I I i didn't finish them but um i was trying you know when you're on a project you 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 things get diverse and and you start working on other things. But um, 
at the end of the day, we're, we're making video games or movies or whatever, and we're at a desk, and it's pretty plush. Mm -hmm. um, it's That's not to say that it's not dangerous to our health. I mean, like, um, your eyes definitely take a beating. Uh, my back takes a beating. Um, th there's drawbacks, of course, but um, it's not anything compared to, like, you know, when I had to deal with customer service and, and all that other stuff when I was struggling along right so, exactly um as far as mentally preparing for crunch um if if you have to mentally prepare then i think the job might suck and it might not be something that you want to keep doing for too long honestly because <laughs> i mean i mean there's parts of the job i don't like either like i get really burnt out on doing a lot of retopology or a lot of um uv mapping or like you know the tedious stuff like right. i used to be okay with it and now i'm more like man i just i just want when are computers going to do this? <laughs> like, like, when is that going to really be done? Where's um, my ma uh, make retopo button? Yeah, like everyone's developing AI to have conversations with a computer. I'm like, no, 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 no. We need like computers to just do tedious tasks for us now. Like, can we just not? We don't need to talk to them. Like, I don't want to have a conversation. But yeah, um, <laughs> I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> I don't want to talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you see like what happened with that uh, that Twitter uh, bot that Microsoft put out. <laughs> like that was ridiculous. It's like, see, we shouldn't be talking to them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just continue to ignore the people yeah. that are complaining. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think that while those certain tasks are tedious, I, I still think about like how frustrating it was to deal with. Um, yeah. Uh, certain certain aspects like this. I always go back to like retail. I'm like, man, I I had like bad retail experiences, and I think that those are normal retail experiences. What uh, what retail places did you work at? <laughs> I was at Sports Chalet, and uh, that wasn't too bad. The customers were bad. Ah, well, um, that'll do it. Yeah, the, um, it was in a really really expensive mall in Orange County, and they wouldn't come in to get like a basketball. They would come in and buy like brand new top of line ski equipment for the whole family, mm. and they've never skied before. Oh, and that's a lot yeah, of money right there. It's a lot of money, and that's how <laughs> and, you know. And it was it was their toy store, so yeah. and that's that's fine. Like that's their business. It just sucks when they uh, took it out on the you know, kid in college that's trying to help him figure out what boots to get. Whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it made you appreciate um, nice people though, didn't it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I would thank, I would thank people if they were like, have a good day. I was like, thanks. Yeah. You too. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm enjoy, a, uh, your, enjoy your basketball. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm a firm, firm believer that, uh, that everybody in the United States should work at least one month in the restaurant industry. Yeah, and see, that's something I avoided because I knew that... Or some kind of retail, some kind of, like, yeah, customer yeah. service. Yeah, see, like, I avoided the the retail, or uh, the, the food thing, um, because I had friends that did it, and I heard so many horror stories, and I'm like, I'm going to go retail and develop my own horror stories. <laughs> the one that was really difficult was Toys R Us, though, because that was holiday help. Oh, that was not fun. Oh, that's even worse, man. Oh, really man. Fun. I found out about all their secret sales that they would have, like, um, certain nights they they're open until like two a.m. But it's only open to mothers, and like they have to prove they're a mom somehow. It was weird. Man. Oh man! Like, it's like I had no idea this stuff existed. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was crazy. So to me, that's that's work. Yeah. Um, so even though like you know in the industry like it can be frustrating with uh, clients not knowing what they want or. Um, you're not doing exactly what you want to do on the project or you're not able to get, you know what I mean? Like it's not a perfect situation. It's like, um, yeah, it's you're at the end of the day, you're still just making video games and, and right. movies. Gotcha. So you're still, you're still working in uh Dynamesh, right? So you're just, uh, doing am, insert, yeah. insert brush, uh, and adding more and then re dynameshing, sculpting, yep. re dynameshing, yep. sculpting. Yeah, I stay in Dynamesh for quite a while, um, and sometimes I'll I'll up the the resolution quite a bit just when I'm doing something like this for fun. Mm -hmm. um, at a certain point, I z remesh it, Interesting. and and uh, that way I have a low base mesh. It's easy to pose. That's my main thing. Is like I want something that's easy to pose. Um, I want to be able to you know get it out of the the A frame or T pose. Kind right. Of. 
So would. can you? Uh, so I've actually never seen this done before. Can you go over what you just did with the sure. uh, little wing thingamajiggers? Yeah, I'm using the, one of the curve brushes. It's the I'm using Curve Tri Fill. What? So um, it'll create little shapes for you, and I can dynamesh that in as like webbing or whatever. Um, but yeah, the way it works is you draw your curve out and you see how it's got that solid line connecting yeah that's, that's showing you the the shape that it's going to uh close uh, and then oh. and then you can adjust that with your uh brush size and then like tap on the curve again and it'll give you a different thickness oh dude that is awesome see i even i learned stuff god that's go. freaking awesome and there's a lot of stuff like that in zbrush that makes it um just really quick and easy yeah dude that is awesome Give him a little stretchy skin. He's kind of... I need to change him up a bit. He's kind of looking like an elite. <laughs> had, From had, Halo. Oh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, or we can we can just edit that out. Oh, no, wait, it's live. Yeah, it's, it's, sh- it's, it's now. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll edit it out. <laughs> 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 um, okay, uh, so we got a couple more questions going down. Um, and then... Uh, when when in between the questions and stuff if you come up with something that you're doing that you feel would be better explained um okay. definitely feel free to be like you know hold on a second Let, i'm doing this and this and this that kind of thing right. so right, right. we can okay. kind of keep a uh peek into your mind that's why we're here uh, all right and that's that's none of your business <laughs> you know, that's personal sir yeah. <laughs> that one you have to pay extra for and you'd yeah. have to ask my wife sorry <laughs> um so uh somebody's asking where do you find inspiration for creating characters and or creatures oh man um well the, the first thing that comes to mind is other artists uh so friends of mine um people that i'm watching on art station um I, I get excited usually in, in uh, like techniques or like when somebody just, you know, raises the bar in, in some degree. Um, as far as like shapes go and uh, that kind of thing, I'm trying to think of like a really good example. I don't know. I guess one, one I guess to be fully honest, like one place is the shower. <laughs> I do. <laughs> This is a uh, this is a PG thirteen, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A... <laughs> I, just, I just get like yeah. my mind my mind wanders a lot. So um, sure. on on certain projects, like personal projects that I'm doing, I get stuck a lot, honestly. And mm. um, so one of the places where like I really zone out is like in the shower or driving or something like that. And then I I to to gain that inspiration back or to to break through some of the uh, the walls that I'm facing. Mm. Um, Sometimes putting myself into that character and imagining like how it would move, something really simple like that, um, and that ends up breaking whatever wall I'm I'm facing. So I never really, when I'm dealing with personal stuff like this, um, I never, very rarely I should say, have a plan to uh, that initially inspired me like, oh, I want to make something like that. I want to do that. It's usually just I'm playing around, kind of like how you're seeing me do it now. Right. And um, it's usually a turd, and then I step <laughs> I step away from it for a while, and then like if it's something I'm really excited about, then um, after thinking about the character for a bit and just its motion and demeanor and things like that, um, and how it would behave like on screen or whatever, uh-huh. uh, I usually get more ideas kind of popping that way. So actually, as an example. Um, uh, what's his name? The 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 character that I did. Actually, I have to leave like full screen to to do this. Hopefully, it doesn't interrupt the stream at all. Oh, the stream just went down, dude. Oh, oh damn my it! God. Oh my god! No, <laughs> just kidding. You're good. <laughs> uh, this guy, I had no idea what color to to put into him. I didn't know how to pose him, and I had like a deadline uh, for Pixel Logic to get this done. Mm. Um, and this was one of those ones where I was just dwelling in the shower for quite a bit, and then I instead of thinking about the character, I started thinking about how I wanted to light it, or what it would it look like in a movie, or how would it be presented right. um that's not what influenced the whole final lighting and rendering scene but it gave me an idea on on his demeanor and how he would like slowly stride down a hall or something and it would be this menacing figure right um and then it all kind of snowballed from there i guess that's so, really that's really interesting that you like 
um, that you think about the movement and demeanor of the character, and that helps you drive the shape of the character. Yeah, because then it's like, okay, well, how do I want the light? Or in that scenario, how is the light going to fall and, and cascade onto the character's shapes? And then what um, what is the focus at that point? You right. Know what I mean, that's a really really cool idea. I'm I'm gonna actually I'm gonna steal that one. I'm I'm totally gonna yeah, steal go that for one. it. You should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. it just makes it um, it makes it easier to um, break through some of the things. Because then, like, if you're just focusing on shapes all the time and you don't really have an answer or something that you can directly look at and it starts to get stale on you right like you're yeah like, and you just your brain ends up looping on the same thing over and over and over again like how do i make the shapes better how do i make the shapes better how do i make the shapes better right and it's like well how's it move that influences how the shapes look yeah what's um, the what's the function right yeah exactly and then when you start thinking about that stuff suddenly you're like oh oh wait a minute got yeah. it that's um, really got it. yeah man say i don't know about you guys but that was that was one of the best nuggets so far. <laughs> it, it all started kind of weird, but it, it got somewhere. Yeah, I guess it started with a shower and ended yeah. up with. <laughs> well, that's what I do. I'm like, I'm like in there. I'm like, okay, well, if it's arm, you know, I have nothing else to really think about because I'm not like dwelling on like unless it, reverse that back to like when I was doing freelance. Then I was like, where am I going to get the next job? You know, like, right? Where, where am I going to find work? What am I going? Who can I talk to? What's going to happen? How do I schedule this? Right. Um. When I have time, then my brain kind of drifts a lot more, and I can yeah. do stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you start uh, getting rid of the 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 noise in your life, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Facebook, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. CNN, and then, and, then, and and then you start to have time for nonsense, basically. And I think that's why some cultures, not many, but some cultures in the world view art as nonsense because it's like uh, you you have time to 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 waste basically like we're, we're all we're all figuring out how to survive right yeah exactly um, i can't remember the name of those cultures but that one we'll exist. call them that, that one yeah that one yeah that one culture yeah that one that one that i wouldn't do very well in. <laughs> not not the one that we blame all uh, like blame a bunch of stuff on but the, the cool one yeah the cool one, yeah. yeah the one we take inspiration <laughs> from <laughs> um okay uh so next question comes from mr rory bjorkman himself what's oh, up man. rory uh are you ready for this I think so. Are you ready? You need a minute? We can take a second if you want. Uh, okay, go. Okay, good. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, do you ever texture outside of ZBrush? Um, what other programs did you would you possibly use for for texturing? I use Substance Painter quite a bit. Oh, <gasps> I love you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love you too. Substance Painter is so awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I I tried Quixel for a bit. And I just wasn't into it as a as a painting app. I wanted something more that could do my bakes, that could do um, yeah, just just more than than what I was getting out of Quixel. And now it's I think that Quixel's fine. Um, at the same time, like I just felt like it was a, a glorified action script, mm. um, and that's what pulled me over to Substance a lot more. Is just that it 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 just it just rang more bells with me. Right. Um, and there's just a lot of versatility, and, and so that's why I went with with that program. Um, and yeah, we, we use it at work, and uh, I actually use it at home now as well for uh, school and demos and that kind nice. of thing. Have you upgraded yet? Yes. Uh, what do you? How do you feel about the uh, the new iRay render? I like it a lot. I haven't really toyed with it enough to understand what's going on. I've gotten some pretty crappy renders out of it, but I know that I see its potential. Like yeah. my renders are really grainy and I'm like, okay, cool. I'll come back to that. Yeah. You know, gotcha. but, um, yeah, I just, I, I haven't played with it as much. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll keep an ear out for your feedback. Cause right now okay. in my experience, it's been like push button, make sexy art. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, well, that's what, that's like when I started playing with it, I was like, oh, so it, it is pretty, um, it is pretty simple, you yeah. know. Like, there, there's not a lot that I need to figure out, but um, yeah, we'll we'll see how that yeah. actually pans. Um. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're we're getting kind of backed up on questions, so we're gonna we're gonna quick fire okay. a couple. Ready? All right. Okay. Um. Do you draw? And oh yeah. Do you draw from life a lot? I try to. Um. Yes, I draw a lot. Um. Not as much lately as I should. I always carry a sketchbook. 
Um, I try inks, pencil. Um, I, I have like a little mole skin. I have a couple mole skins. I have like the, the flimsier like newspaper one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have like the marker one um, that I, I like to use more lately. Um, but yeah, drawing as much as I can. Um, I'd go to like zoo trips and things like that and try to try to draw from life. Um, that helps a lot. But yeah, drawing and sculpting go hand in hand. Like you have to, I think my opinion is you really have to do both. Yeah. Uh, so that that actually brings up another question further on down the list. And do you do uh, traditional sculpture? Uh, no, I'll, I'll say no. I don't. Um, I have a lot of clay. I I've done it quite a bit. That's what I started doing, but no, nothing professionally. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't have the money or the space, and um, ultimately, ZBrush just kind of won out. And <laughs> it's cheaper. Right. Well, yeah, it's cheaper. in the long well, initially, run, initially it was Mudbox for me. Um, oh, you were a mud box guy first, huh? Yeah, I was a mud box guy first. And then uh, I, uh, so I'm so that's interesting. What brought you over to ZBrush um, from Mudbox? Yeah, it, it was a. Uh, I did. I didn't. I don't care for for mud box. But what I liked was how easy it was to dive into. So mm -hmm. like I used to recommend it as like a good, good learning tool. Mud box, um, but yeah, mud box. Yeah. Okay, so. That's I, I did. I used to. I used to say like, if you want to just get into digital sculpting and, and get a feel for it, um, Mudbox is pretty straightforward. And then once you're you're finding that it's it's kind of limited and not doing everything that you want, try ZBrush. Um, gotcha. My opinion's changed a bit now. I'm just like, just go to ZBrush. Just <laughs> just <laughs> cut straight to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's interesting what you're what you're doing now. Um, so do you find it faster and easier for you to do insert meshes other than just sculpting uh, the Dynamesh? Yeah. yeah. So this is how I draw as well. Um, I use primitives, mm. a lot of primitives, and I draw through the shapes a bunch. Like I'll draw the sphere over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, same with cubes, and uh, and cylinders, and then like when you pull back from it, and here I'll smooth it out a little. Like, you're already starting to get that gesture in there. Hmm. And then it's just a matter of, like, taking the move brush, and I'll hold Alt to pull based on the normals. Yeah. Make it, like, fairly large, and then you can start to... Wait, wait, wait. Just do that again. So if you're using the move brush and you hold Alt, it pulls against the normals? Yeah, see? What? God damn, That's awesome. Yeah, so you, so you don't have to, like, eh, and then, eh, eh, eh. You know, you don't have to do all that. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You just kind of hit it from a specific angle. And the reason I'm using these um, primitives is so that I have, especially like the cube, is so that I have these clear planes to the f uh, fingers. Uh, and then I can just go through and like sculpt this stuff out and it saves like a bunch of time. That's, w yeah, that, that also is a really good point. I mean, when I have less than, when, I, when I've when i lost seven <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a little bit, it was actually a little bit more because of that technical snafu. So it you was. actually lost 10. <laughs> well, you can call me out on that. You'd be like, you know what? It's because of you. You logged in late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's okay. It's all good. I'll take the blame, dude. I'll take the blame. Let's blame Google. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's it. OBS. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah it was OBS. It was, yeah. 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 So you can see, like, I'm starting to get, um, a lot more gesture out of it and expression in, yeah. in these in these things these things called fingers um and it just happens a lot quicker than if i were to try to block that stuff out right and then we gotta save this too because oh well God. not that button not that button <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah and then, and then we're just gonna get into some scripting all right oh we'll so the yeah rest of it. <laughs> I think I think he would lose everyone. He would be like, yeah. "What?" Uh, he scripts his characters. <laughs> He's like, "I wait, you sculpt your characters, bro? This is all <laughs> no. this is all ones and zeros, baby." Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, that's freaking crazy. Um, so uh, next thing is, um, when did you start in three D? When did you start doing all this fun stuff in, in actual three D? Uh, uh, I would say, um, when I was still in school, uh, I hated 3d 
Uh, I was really turned off by it. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll be a concept artist. And then I felt like I wasn't good enough for that. Uh, and then I discovered, um, uh, well, I was working late one night and this teacher comes running by. This is my junior year of, of school. So this was 2006. Hmm. And um, teacher is like, goes running by late at night, you know, and like a bunch of us are working in labs and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to do a ZBrush demo. And I'm like, what the hell is ZBrush? <laughs> <laughs> No one, you know, it was like brand new at the time. And he, I watched and he's doing the ZBrush demo and I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. Because I went to school initially for sculpting and I wanted to be, I wanted to do maquettes. I was inspired by um, the uh, art of episode two when they had the yeah. maquettes for the droids and creatures and stuff. And I was like, you can do that? Like, you know, because I'm still like in high school, I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school. I'm like, I want to do that. I didn't know that's real. Right. Um, so, uh that's that's where the initial inspiration came from and so i went to school and a majority of my time in school was not that it was um you know i had a uv mapping class i had a um a typography class i had all these other things that were very important and i feel i needed but it's you know as as a as someone just starting out i was like man this is not what i wanted <laughs> yeah but um, this is supposed to be fun not tedious and annoying yeah, yeah, and I didn't see the value instantly. And then looking back, I'm like, man, that was um, exactly what I needed to understand things. And like, yeah. I actually, I actually realized that before I graduated, and I stayed um, an extra semester, or semester and a half, uh, just taking uh, graphic design classes where we were designing beer labels and logos and stuff. And that's where I actually learned more about shape language than yes, other other classes that I was supposed to learn that in. I was yeah. like, I, that's I, uh, one of my big things too, is what I try to tell people is that like, you know, it, it's not about the software that you use. Yeah. It's not about like the tools that you're using. It's about like your design um, yep. knowledge, right? Like, yep. Yep. It, go ahead. Totally. Yeah. I gained a lot of uh, uh, knowledge too on um, viewer manipulation, um, message, how to send messages through shapes, how to sell something how to all that stuff i don't put a lot of that to use because i'm not i'm not selling cosmetics with these creatures Mm. but um and it's it's just like when when you learn about that stuff you're like man um i am manipulated every day (laughs) my my opinion is controlled all the time and it's by artists and and uh people in suits um but you learn a lot and um it was super super valuable and so I was trying to, I was using a lot of super sculpting once I finally got a sculpting class and, mm. and uh, it was kind of frustrating, but I was still enjoying it. And um, then, yeah, there was that teacher that ran by and I was like, I'm doing a ZBrush demo. You guys should all know this stuff. And um, I think the reason I went to Mudbox was because at the time ZBrush was, a two, it, well, it still is a two and a half D program Yeah, that uh meant that you needed to drop your sculpt onto the canvas to actually sculpt on it. Yeah. That, uh, so you couldn't, you couldn't really sculpt in 3D. So that's why I went to Mudbox, because it was like an actual 3D program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I... I um, was like, nope, we'll, we'll go 3D as well. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll use ZBrush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Like when you're... I mean, that's one of the big tough things about ZBrush and anybody starting to pick it up is that um, it's... It's it's really tough to wrap your brain around it, especially if you've used any of the 3D programs in the world, you know. Right, right. Yeah, it's very different. But if you um if you understand the core of it, then it becomes much much easier, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and it what I like about it too is that uh, it opens up a lot of ideas for artists. Its weirdness <laughs> creates a lot of new workflows, honestly. Mm. Um, and I've seen, I've I mean, I've created things based on. I don't want to say the limitations of the tool, but like how the tool works has influenced how I make things. Um, Interesting. And I think, and I think that's in a positive way, you know, because otherwise I would look up like how some other artist does a certain thing. And then I would make something that looks like what they've already done. Right. With their technique. Yeah. With their, with their technique. Yeah. And um, that's why I, I, um, I don't know with, with the whole education, the online education, like there's, so many great things coming out but i also see a lot of people just um doing what i was doing a long time ago like at the start of the stream what i mentioned was 
you know, the imitation. And what I'm hoping for is that those artists branch out and, and discover how they could do things in ZBrush too and, right. and do it do it differently. Because there's a lot under the hood that Pixelogic's put in that um, is just really different from other 3D programs. Right. And it's really interesting seeing how people figure those things out and what they come up with based on yeah. their own, like, hardships <laughs> of getting to know yeah. the program, you know? Yeah, totally. And that's that's how I developed certain things. I was like, well, I don't know what to do for this this area. I had an idea for the design, uh-huh. but it's I just don't know how I could do it in ZBrush, and I'm running out of time with my deadline. Yeah. Um, and then the design kind of shifts a bit, and... I know some artists don't like that because then it's like, oh, then you're compromising your original vision. But I like to refer to it as improvisation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. Like, well, I'm going to use the tools that I know, and I'm going to use them how I know how to use them, and we'll develop something out of that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. How it goes. Yeah, that was uh, one of my last projects. I was I was doing. I was under a super tight deadline. And I need to do some like some hard surface stuff, and. Yeah. Um, I was like, well, I could take it into Maya or, or Moto and try to do it and do all that. But I, or I could just open up Z Modeler real quick and try to figure it out real quick with Z Modeler. And yeah. that, like, just fuel to the fire, man. Just, just you know, feet to the flame. Yep. I was able to use um, Z Modeler, right? And I've been using it ever since. I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm actually glad I went through that, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm just starting to block out something that's biomechanical for his ugly face. Sweet. I don't know what I'm doing yet. It's okay, man. We're... Just don't tell us that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, got, um, I, got the, I got some cool ideas. I got the best ideas right now. The best of all of the ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, do you use Z-Spheres or no? How do you um, feel I about do. them? I do. Um, I actually... Uh, I, I recently did a Z Sphere demo for the students at LCAD, and they were pretty into it, which was uh, surprising because they used to not like it. When when Dynamesh first came out, people were like, "What's the point? You know, what's the point of Z Spheres?" Um, but I showed them this trick on how you can do um, the skeleton or treat the uh, the, the Z Spheres as armatures, and then uh-huh. uh, use Sketch Spheres with red poly paint, and it'll look like muscles as you sketch on there and smooth it and it'll go from red to white and you get these nice like tendons and stuff. What? That looks really cool. Um, I can do a, I can do a quick. Yeah. I would little, love to see it. Just a, uh, even just a, the, the idea would be yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right. So imagine you're, you're doing a, you're doing an armature, right? All right. This is a brand so, new tool, right? Yeah. This is the Z sphere. So I'll, when I draw these spheres out, I hold shift. So they're the exact same size as the uh, right. previous sphere. Um, and that way I stick to like an actual like armature um, right. mentality where it's like they're all wires. Uh, and then what I usually do is uh, scale them down by, um, if I can get this right, holding alt. So they all scale down together. So oh, it's nice, cool. and, nice and thin. And then what I'll do is switch this down uh, to in the Z sketch area. I'll turn on edit sketch. Actually, sorry, let me fill this with a solid color. So I'm going to fill this with white. So I'm going to go to fill object, color fill object. So that one, when I switch to red in my poly paint here, mm-hmm. it's not, it's not going to change on me. Right. So edit sketch. I'm now using sketch spheres, which will draw on red. And then when I smooth this, see how it transitions what the... and you start to get like this blend of red to, to white. And it starts to look like tendons, right? Tendons and muscle groups. And so then you can just keep drawing these on. I'm going to make my draw size a lot smaller. It's being, it's being weird. I think my scale's off. That's why my Z spheres are acting all funky. But there we go. And so you can see, you can start blending in muscle groups. What the? It's like if I switch to something like uh, Skin Shade Four, it'll really look like a skeleton with muscle groups on it. And you just keep going with it. That's great. And- okay. So where where do you take it from there? Do you turn it into a mesh from there, or yeah, yeah, I'll dynamesh it. I'll just dynamesh it from this point. Like once once the shape's happy. So what's cool about this is you can talk to your client if you're doing like a freelance creature gig or whatever. Uh huh. And you'd be like, well, this is this is kind of the block out that I'm thinking about. This would go along with whatever preliminary 
concepts you have to because you don't want them to just look at a balloon animal right um but then what's neat is you can turn edit sketch off and then you can do a show sketch and then bind and you can show them how it's going to articulate what the and like the range of motion in your muscle groups and it's usually not very accurate but you know what to a lot of people that's really cool <laughs> yeah man <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then once you're done with it you just turn bind off and go back to edit sketch and you can put some more muscle groups in there yeah so it's a it's a fun it's a fun tool it, and i think beyond being just fun it's uh it's pretty useful you can really sell an idea with this so and can, a lot of the times that's what you're doing with concept art it's not right. just i'm gonna show you my ideas and you're gonna pick the best one because that's right. kind of that rarely happens <clears throat> it's more like here are my ideas i'm gonna sell you one that i think is best right you have to do a lot of convincing um, yeah it's a, you are pretty much a salesman yeah yeah you're totally that's how it works that's interesting. Um, so, can you use this type of method with, um, like, uh, for posing? Uh, yeah. So you could, you could, like, at the block-in stage. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, you can do Z-sphere binding, like rigging. Mm -hmm. um, it's not very accurate though. It's based off of volumes, like how close they are okay. to a certain geometry. But yeah, you can, you can technically do that. So, like, if you wanted to, uh, let's say you wanted to pose the other guy that you're working on, would you do something like this, or would you just use, like, a transpose master? I would just use transpose master. It's just faster. Okay. Yeah. That's how I would do it. But, yeah, and see, so like, it starts to create some interesting shapes. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So, let's say let's say you're happy with it. Where would you go from there? You just... Uh, yeah, I would just, um, let's see, go down to unified skin. Yeah. And I'd set my resolution, go ahead and hit preview just to see what that's going to look like. And then it crashes. Yeah, yeah and then it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so here's, here's your unified skin, which is essentially like DynaMesh. Um, and it's maintained poly paint and everything. And then you just click make unified. Dude, now you have another tool. That's awesome. And you, yeah, then you just start DynaMeshing this thing. And so now uh, I'm in DynaMesh mode. And you start using your regular brushes, like clay buildup. You start helping on it. So yeah, it's uh, it's another really helpful method. Um, I haven't used it in a while. Right. But um, yeah, I I definitely enjoy my Z spheres. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. So yes, uh, he does use his Z spheres. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, uh, it's Something that I haven't done a lot of uh, more recently, but because a lot of the times I like to just sculpt and, and dive in. Uh, as you saw, like as I started this piece here, I just started with a sphere and everything's just been slowly pulled out and going in, in different directions. Right. But... So somebody was asking um, about the work that you did on Evolve. I uh, was curious mm -hmm. about, uh, you said you're working on trees and like uh, more oh, of. Yeah that kind of stuff do you do you use uh the same type of method you do for creatures or do you usually do you start more in low poly uh maya and then bring it into zbrush um with that stuff i, I started just like i did with this because um, we needed these big unique trees at the time we wanted to experiment with like really large textures and um uh yeah just like one of a kind trees instead of like Mm. more efficient and duplicated trees. Um, so I just started in ZBrush and pushed things around and retopologized it for a long time. And um, that was back, uh, we, I don't think we had DynaMesh at the time. So we were- What the hell did we were, you do before DynaMesh, man? Oh, uh, it was a trick of remeshing. So that's down in Subtool here, you have this remesh all button. Yeah. And it essentially does the same thing as DynaMesh. It was just a matter of like, you clone it um, to make sure that it would work. So you'd make a duplicate in your sub tool list and then remesh. Oh. And so so you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do this and like sculpt and update, sculpt and update. It's like you would sculpt, you would pull things around to as far as they could go, and then you'd have to like remesh it. So it was more of a process. Oh, I gotcha. Stuff. Where now it's like a, a muscle reflex, right? Where you're just like, oh. Seriously. Dude, uh, that one tool changed the industry, man. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It it's, totally did. It cut my time in half with just about everything that I did. I, I love the fact that it brought back um, the art side 
to to sculpting and not like so much of it being technical you know right yeah totally totally so you're looking you're creating a helmet yeah i'm playing with something like i want to do something that's really large i like doing large helmets Uh, it looks like a darth uh or dark helmet from um right space (laughs) balls like i like doing these like big um just impractical things yeah and just seeing where they go, I don't know. It, what usually ends up happening is I'll I'll reduce it or I'll trim it back or whatever. But the point is, like, it's in Dynamesh, so I'm right. not really spending a lot of time blocking this stuff out, right? So it's like I'm not necessarily super committed to it, if, right. even if it changes much. I'm just awesome. giving him something for a bunch of hoses or whatever. Hoser potentially. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, so do, 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 do. let's talk posing for a second. So, um, do you mostly just sculpt in um, in symmetrical pose, and then later do a full pose, or what's your take? Yeah. So what I like to do is uh, work on things symmetrically as long as I can. Uh, then I'll develop the pose, and then once the pose is done, uh, I do another round of sculpting. So then always. you're not you're not worried about that point at at any point you're not really worried about topology or the game mesh right because you're strictly right. doing um, the concept design right right yeah uh, so it's like um, I'm not uh, yeah I'm not worried about topo I'm not worried about um, how it's gonna be assembled or anything like that or even if it's something for 3D print like I'm just playing with the sculpt mm-hmm. and I understand though that. In, in moving forward in that way, I will have some reworking to do. Like, mm-hmm. so say for example, I'm not planning for topology or how I'm going to, you know, do the low. Um, I know that I'm going to have to like make some adjustments to some of the shapes in order to get, um, in order to, to get like a low poly base mesh over everything and do the textures. So I know that it's, it's, um, it's just got like another step, but I don't want to be limited in the high poly when I'm doing like all the shape work. Yeah, when you know. you're doing the actual concept, right? Yeah, exactly. Like that'll that's just another step that I'll deal with. So that's really like I'm switching gears at that point. I'm going from sculptor and conceptor to modeler and then right. I become a, a a modeler and a texturer. Interesting. So it's just it's just different hats. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that and that's the thing that I've been confused about for a long time too. Or not confused, but more of just like when do you when do you make those mm. decisions, you know, like right. but it it's good to know that um, when you're in the, it, it really is about different phases of yeah. of the project, right? So when you're in concept, like you're not too worried about, you know, you're, you're ultimately worried about what the concept is and not how it's going to work in game, right? I mean, um, yeah. The only thing that I'll I will tr- like consciously think about is animation. Mm-hmm. Like I'll think about how it's going to move, um, mostly because of my experience working with animators, and they'll spot things that I'm not thinking about. Um, which sounds kind of funny, but it's like, you know, an animator will spot like, oh, that's going to clip. I'm like, yeah, but it looks cool. I'm like, maybe he just doesn't move that much in that area. Like, maybe his shoulder just doesn't rotate as much. And I'm like, mm, that's going to look really boring. And then they're right. It's going to look really boring and like static. Right. Um, but that's just how my brain works at this stage where I'm just like looking at the overall like shapes and, and, and presence to it. And then they're like, I can't lift his arms. <laughs> Right, but yeah, that's the only thing. I think. That's cool though. No, I, I like the idea of um, the collaboration when it comes down to the full range of the character too. You know, like yeah, it's much more than just the 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 shape, right? It's about how it moves and like you know what its mannerisms are. To you know that all of that stuff um, feeds into what the actual character is, not just th- what the sculpt is. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's, it's your character while you're working on it, but then when you hand it off, it's their character too. Yeah. And, and it, you have to keep that in mind. Cause if, uh, I mean, it, if an animator is not into what they have to animate, it's probably not going to be very good. You know right. what I mean? Like <laughs> they're not going to, they're not going to enjoy doing it. So, um, it's, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should always listen to your animator, but, sure. um, yeah, that's just part of collaboration. Like you have, you have to. You have to work together and, and, right, and exactly. factor that in. But then as far as 
topology goes, it's like, well, I know that I'm going to be modeling it, so I'll worry about that when I get to it. You know? <laughs> right. um, if it was somebody else that had to model my garbage, then I would worry about it a lot more and spend a lot more time making sure that what they have is um, easy to work with, so right. I'm not giving someone a hard time. So uh, when you're doing the concepts, do you ever do them in pose? Uh, no, not really. Um, even though it, it might sound like it would save a bunch of time, uh, for me, it ends up taking longer to, to fix things or get simple things like proportions just right in the arms, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. It just takes me a long time. So I always just end up working um, symmetrically for the most part. So when you're doing like your presentations or whatever, do you do you usually present in, in a symmetrical pose or do you take the time to actually pose them for presentation? Um, if I have the time, I, I try to pose as much as I can. Um, that is kind of a rare situation where I get to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of the times I've been fortunate where clients can, can see and understand um, where things are going and that when it's animated or posed, it'll, it, those shapes will change, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, the artist in me always wants to, um, always wants to put something in a pose at some point. Right. But yeah, it's just, it's something that I, I end up like factoring in, I suppose. You know what I mean? Like, like okay, I know this is going to take me this much time to try and figure this out. So I have to um, give myself enough time to work in some sort of asymmetrical pose. Right. Even if it's, but, very, even if it's very slight. Yeah, the pose, like we're not, we're not talking about a super crazy dynamic pose, right? Just more of like, you know, turn the shoulders, turn the neck, yeah. you know, something yeah. to add just a little bit of life to it. Nothing like, oh, now it's a running pose, right? Exactly, yeah. No, it's it's like idols. Right, really. okay, gotcha, gotcha. And I think that's a, I mean, for, I think that's kind of a common misconception too is that, you know, your pose can be just, you know, put one arm back or like, you know, throw mm -hmm. the hips one yeah. way or throw the shoulders one way and turn the neck, you know, that's a pose. Yep, yeah, So you don't totally. have to do all kinds of crazy re-sculpting and stuff, you know? Right, yeah, and that's that stuff's pretty simple to do, and, and doesn't take as much time. Right. Yeah. So you love that insert mesh. Yeah, man, I, I use these primitives all the time, um, especially with something like this. Like, oops, looks cooler when you're far away. I'm gonna turn polish on my DynaMesh so that it tightens that up a bit. Cool. That's a bit much. I'm gonna increase my res, and then there we go. Yeah, so it's like it's all uh, it's all dynamesh together. It's just um, I'm starting to create more complex shapes yeah. again, just using the primitives because because it's easier. Because <laughs> it's easier. I'm basically yeah, and, and this it's like a sketch. Like what I'm doing right now is like a sketch. Right. It's um it's not final. It's this would get a, a separate pass altogether. Right. And uh, the other thing I do, too, I don't know if anyone's catching it, but I switch to local symmetry a lot um, so that as I scale these things up, they don't, like, relocate or, like, you know, skew on the x-axis at all. Yeah. And then I can uh, easily pose them around and move them um, like this. Then I'll get out of local symmetry because I don't, I don't want local symmetry to affect what I'm doing because right. it'll throw things off. And you don't want that. It's crazy, dude. Ain't nobody got time to fix symmetry. <laughs> what is this S word you speak of, sir? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. So buh, 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 duh, duh. if you want to be a creature artist like yourself, uh, how would you advise, what would you advise having in your portfolio? Well, let's talk about creature, port yeah, creature a portfolio. A lot of creature stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, Let's see. When I was when I got into the industry as a character guy, I had a couple of creatures in my portfolio um, that were done and rendered in uh, Unreal, and then uh, they were really bad, by the way, like really really bad. And <laughs> they just showed that they showed what I was interested in doing. Like this is where I want to go with my career, kind of thing. Uh, and I got fortunate, and and I was picked up by a studio that was um, looking for like a junior artist that would do what I was showing. Mm -hmm. um, and once I was in there, I did uh, a lot of this kind of stuff. Like I just did ZBrush stuff because it's what I wanted to get better at. Right. And you know, if 
it's like the saying, um, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Mm. Uh, that's what I was doing. I was, I was trying to prepare another pr portfolio or body of work. I don't like the term portfolio because then it sounds like, a, it, it's so formal and like this, I'm, I'm putting together a, a pitch packet of myself. It's like, I, I just view it as like a body of work. Uh, you know, this is what I like to make. And, um, it doesn't all have to sit together. It doesn't need to all necessarily be the same thing, but it represents what you like to do because, and, and you're not consciously putting it together. You know what right. I mean? Like you're, you're just, as an artist, you by nature do stuff. So that's what, um, that's what I was really doing at the end of the day. I just wanted to do stuff that made me happy mm -hmm. um, and fulfilled. And it ended up getting me work like, you know, making some collectibles in the resin kit industry and then um, doing film concept stuff. And and then I just got better jobs within the game industry because they saw that like, oh, his sculpting is actually a lot better than right. like when I started in school. So um, I got better game jobs out of it. And so I think that if, if you want to be a creature guy or girl, um, creature person, you um you obviously need to just have a lot of of creature related stuff but here's the thing i find so much creature art to be well first of all it's everywhere like everybody wants that it's really fun there's a lot of imagination in it and, there, and it sparks a lot of wonder in all of us mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of storytelling with creature design and, and art um but not everybody has like the design chops so what you end up seeing is a lot of like blobby monsters on ZBrush, you know? Right. Um, so I think design is a huge, huge uh, element to being a, a creature artist and understanding anatomy, of course. Um, all these things like help you stand out from everybody else. And so you're not just another blobby ZBrush monster. <laughs> right. It's, I mean, it goes, it always harkens back to those, um, design skills right yeah yep like the yeah. the core art um fundamentals design and you know patterns and and shapes and forms and values and all that stuff rhythm and balance and yep exactly like it, it's good to know all of those things just in general but then um to really separate yourself amongst concept artists uh or, or creature artists mm -hmm. uh, so so many creature artists just go to those those big round muscle shapes and big organic soft shapes and and they don't snipe in details with with hard surfaces like if you look at this guy he's still uh, by no means an example i suppose but like um i have all these like soft forms but then like right here at the peak you got these like hard ridges and right there's like another hard ridge and then back here we got like a hard straight line here and then there's a straight line here countering this soft uh, muscle group in the back it's like you you have this flow to things and um, that's how I choose to to push things around, and each artist is different. But mm -hmm. yeah, point is like you, you develop um, a sense of of design, contrast, composition, all these things. Um, it's it's not just like oh well, I vaguely know some anatomy, and I watched the stream where this guy said that he doesn't remember any muscle groups. So <laughs> I, I can, I can see it and just make a bunch of blobby shapes that look cool to me. Right. Um, there's more to it than that. There's definitely there's definite rules to design and, and organics. Where so where do you think um, a good place to learn that type of stuff is? Like, do you have any like you know books or or um, you know specific industries you look at when you try to keep those types of things in mind? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, books, I, I for anatomy, uh, anatomy for sculptors is like the number one book for me. I uh, love that book because it simplifies everything into primitive shapes, blocks, uh, planes. Um, that's, that's a great um, point of reference for just forms in general. Uh, for creature design and, and, and motion and, um, I guess, inspiration and art, uh, mm -hmm. Tara Whitlatch is definitely one of them. I have all of her books. Um, I look who, at a lot wait, of... Wait, who is that? Tara Whitlatch. You know how to spell um, that? I think... Uh, I can. I can. Uh, oh, just off... Just uh, maybe off the, off the 
off the top of your head. I'm, I, I'm to... always I'm always misspelling your name. I don't even know if I'm saying <laughs> it. Uh, let me get her book here. So the books that she she puts out. Um, I, I initially found her, she did a Star Wars book, like Creatures of Star Wars, and that was my first exposure to her. Um, but she's done uh, Creature Design and uh, Principles of Creature Design. Um, uh, the, the Creature Design series, uh, she's got like Nomon DVDs out. Um, those are definitely things to watch. So, gotcha. uh, yeah, her, na- her name is spelled... Uh, Terrell Whitlatch, right? Yeah, T-E-R-R-Y-L. Yeah. And then Whitlatch is W H I T L A. T-C-H. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So I look at her stuff a lot. Um, I look at a lot of animators as well. Um, or, or maybe not necessarily animators, but like uh, Claire Wendling is another one. Uh, tons of motion and life in her in her creatures. Um, I, I feel like I might be forgetting what the initial question was, but... Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, inspiration. Where do you go for inspiration? Yeah. Um, so those places... Uh, gosh. Um even even like I mentioned, uh, like art station and things like that. Like looking at friends and and what they're doing. Um, uh, what was the 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 creature book? Essence Creatures was that was a big one uh, mm. about a year ago that really put a fire under my ass. I was like, man, I need to I need to make stuff like this because that what what those guys made like that whole book was just awesome. There's so many great artists in it, right? And. Um, it was one of those books that made me jealous. I was like, damn it. Why am I not making something right now? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, that book is freaking awesome. So, it, but then you go, you do real life stuff too, right? So you like go to the zoo or you look at like real life yeah. animals and, and such. It's, yeah. It's been a little while since I've been to the zoo, but yes, uh, it's a, it's an important part of all of this. Um, I think that in order to be a creature guy, you obviously need to really love animals. Um, and initially I was looking into, uh, while I was making plans to go into marine biology. I I really didn't think that I was going to make it as an artist. So that's where I was going. I was going to school for it. Um, I had all these plans and um, and it got a little frustrating because I realized it's not just putting on a scuba diving suit and going out into the ocean. It was (laughs) (laughs) Um, was like actually science. Yeah, it was actual science and stuff. (laughs) And uh, I just wanted to go see whales and and squids and... uh, (laughs) So I realized once I became an artist, I was like, or when I was going down that path, I was like, well, wait a minute. Am I going to regret this? I was like, right. you know what? I can always, I can always get scuba gear and I can, <laughs> I can go put myself in danger uh, later as a hobby. Right. Um, <laughs> Do that on the weekends. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that was, um, I don't know. It's, that's, that's part of it. Like just knowing a lot about animals and you know and I was really surprised. I, did, I thought a lot of this stuff was common knowledge when I was in the marine biology class and I did a I didn't know what to do a presentation on and everybody did these cool presentations on tides and uh, weather patterns and, mm-hmm. and, and the seafloor uh, 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 geography or ge- geology, geology. And uh, see, this is good. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I did mine on, uh, on squids and species of squids. I talked about Architeuthis, talked about Humboldt squids, talked about all these things. And they had no idea. Right. Like, the, the, no, they were like, what? The, you know, colossal squids and all this. I'm showing pictures. I'm like, yeah, we, we know these things exist. And I thought that was weird that they were all um, on their way to becoming marine biologists. And they were ahead of me in that road. And they had no idea about all this stuff. And, like, we started talking about sharks. And they're like, what? That's in the ocean, too? I'm like, what are you? How did you all get here? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, what, you know, like, what road path were you on that said, you know what? marine biology because i mean biology creatures animals living things it's in the name um so then i felt i felt a little bit more special and i was like okay i I know something you know like and that was good at the time because it was like after semesters of defeat and bad grades you know yeah and then i was like oh okay so the thing that i actually really wanted to do um, that's related to animals i'm I'm good at and it turns out it's not as common knowledge (laughs) a whole lot less science too yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, I, I remember these names. I know the names of squids. I can mm-hmm. <laughs> talk about their behavior and what we know and, and all that stuff. And uh, anyway, I, I guess the point is um, there, there's a lot to, there's a lot to uh, just nature and biology, and, and I find all that stuff super fascinating. And um, I watch a lot of documentaries, um, especially animal documentaries, talking about, like, animal behavior and mm-hmm. 
Um, and it's not homework, right? Like it's not research, right. um, but I suppose it, it counts because I'm, I'm gaining a lot of stuff from that. You know, well, you learn. can call all that stuff research, right? Then you could just write it off on your taxes. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's like, you know, I, I learned that um, at one point uh, that certain types of crabs like land hermits, they have half gills. They're, it's a type of gill that can breathe air or breathe uh, oxygen or gain oxygen through the air and also through the water. Uh, they need a certain amount of humidity. And it's like when you start thinking about that, it's like, okay, well, you can develop some really cool uh, mm. shapes and, 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 you know, creature utilities right. from, from that kind of info, you know, instead of, instead of your basic, like, Oh, I don't know. I'm going to make a fish man. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you could take that further. If you, if you planned for, or if you knew certain things, you have a bigger right. uh, knowledge bank to pull from. So it's not always just what's popular on, on art station or, or whatever it's, it's, that's where the initial spark comes from. And then it's right. other, other passions in my life, like, like nature documentaries or um, coffee coffee yeah. yeah yeah you see those <laughs> lots of merit and all of a sudden you're like wait a minute <laughs> <Here."> <laughs> that's awesome yeah so I, i'm noticing that you're 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 do a lot of like um you make sure that there's places for your eye to rest right yeah i try to anyway like i'm really worried right now that this is getting a little too busy but um when i pull back it, it's all just kind of reading as like a, a general shape right like mm -hmm. you're seeing you're seeing this pattern here. Right. And then once you zoom in, there's, and as it rotates to different angles, we're starting to get some different reads, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious about um, giving your, giving your eye somewhere to like sit down for a second. And, yeah. but at the same time, it, that shape needs to be interesting too, right? Like it needs right. to have, it needs to have a rhythm to it or a ring to it. Um, just like with, I always use music as an analogy, but like with music, when, when you have a low point in it, you're still hearing something and there's still a slight sound wave that's slowly going up and down and you have some kind of like pause in it before you get hit with the bass drop again. Interesting. That's, um, a, that's a really, really good uh, analogy. I like it. Yeah. I like, I mean, uh, you know, it's music is, it's, it's all art. It's all the same thing. That's, that's what I'm slowly learning is that it doesn't matter what your medium is. It's all the yeah. same stuff and it's all helping. Like if you took time away from, from sculpting and, and did some music production, like got in, got on a MacBook and plugged in Ableton or whatever and started making music, uh, it'd be frustrating. But as you start making things, uh, you realize that you're developing patterns that you do with your art and that it's the same, even though it, you know, it may not be mm -hmm. correct, but if you put it side by side, like, okay, this is the pacing of my song. Now look at my sculpting. Right. You'll find the same rhythms and, that's and really, patterns. That's, that's crazy weird. But it's true, it is, though. It it's is. like a, it's, that's where, like, your self-expression comes in, you know, and what you right. find interesting in the rhythms and, and forms and, you know, dips and dives that, that you find interesting. Yeah. This is, this is, these are the patterns that my brain farts out when given the opportunity. <laughs> and... That's a pretty damn sexy brain fart, if I have to say. <laughs> that might be the uh, the uh, quote of the night here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, these are the patterns. These are sexy but, brain farts. Yeah, but I'm really interested too in the in the coming future on like, uh, um, in what science is gonna medical science is gonna show because we're getting closer and closer to actually being able to visualize someone else's mental image you know like we're, we're finally seeing the mind's eye with some of these uh technological breakthroughs and i'm so curious to see what ends up popping out because it's like if you, if you put somebody like uh in somewhat semi-conscious state are would you see like if you plugged me in would you just see like these random patterns you know what i mean like basically where's this stuff coming from is it a collection of experiences or is it um just a wavelength and pattern that my brain naturally does right you know because then because then we can start to understand art and how we develop right yeah, but then that also opens up like another pandora's box like do we want to know do we want to know how this was all this is a collection of things or am i you know what i mean like it's uh it's getting too deep right <laughs> all right well let's go on to the next question we'll, we'll get sure. back out of that crevice real quick <laughs> um so uh, how did you transition from freelance to working in-house, and which do you prefer? 
Ooh, uh, that's a good question. Um, the freelance to in-house was fairly easy for me. I mean, because I've done it before. I worked in-house before, and then I, I took a break um, to go freelance. Um, <coughs> so I honestly just saw a job listing that didn't make sense to me. It was a mobile company looking for like AAA developers. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. I had no freelance coming in, so I checked it out and got an interview. And uh, this is where you're at now. This is where I'm at now. Yeah, and then I, I yeah, and that's where I, that's where I'm at. So <laughs> uh, they, they showed me the pitch and told me what they were planning on doing, and I was like, this is awesome. Um, like to be a part of it. It's here in the city. Let's do it. Do you want you um, want to tell people who, where you're at now? Yeah, I'm at Pocket Gems. Uh, it's a mobile company uh, that's trying to branch out into new areas. And um, that's what initially had me really excited about working there is um, that it's it's mobile, uh, it's you know a new a new frontier so to speak in, mm -hmm. in gaming, um, and there's a lot of opportunity there to to make something great that hasn't been made yet, and um, that's that was the initial attraction and it started with a curiosity and then I'm like cool I'm I'm all in, um, so now the, the difference between or, or the, the other part of the question of like, do I like in-house versus um, freelance? Mm -hmm. I like both. Um, I love having my own office. I love having my own space, um, being able to uh, sleep in a little bit more and then work super late or some days the opposite. I get in, I don't have to commute. I'm up super early and uh, you know, I, I don't feel bad about leaving my desk at three in the afternoon. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's my own gig. Um, and less meetings, <laughs> less, <laughs> less, less meetings and and honestly, like, uh, just different responsibilities too, where I'm, I'm dealing with a client, I'm on the creative side of things and, and, and I'm working with a couple people on it. When you're at a studio, you have more responsibilities, even if you're, um, uh, even if you're like a junior, you know, you're randomly going to get asked by your art director or producer, like, Hey, we need help with such and such. Think you could jump on that for a bit. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're off site, they're not going to go to you for that. They're going to, they're like, right. well, he's our, he's our character guy. Like don't bug him with that stuff. Cause right. it's too difficult to communicate that to somebody off site. Right. There's definitely so, pros and cons of both. Yeah, I, I think so. And, but you know, then working, uh, working from home, I got, uh, I got into a bad habit of um, just having a weird schedule. Like mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, it didn't interfere with my work at all. The clients that I had had no idea, but it was just a weird routine. Like I didn't have a normal person's routine yeah. of, of, of getting up at a regular time. So if you're bad about that, then yeah. it, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. And I just missed, I missed people. Yeah. You know, I could Definitely. go to a coffee. I could go to a coffee shop, but then I'm just hearing conversations about like uh, either someone's people you know, having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so, someone's weekend plans or something. I'm like, you know what? I kind of miss the buzz of an office like, yeah. where we're, where we're all talking about the same things. Um, so that's what. And, and you know, the main reason I, like I said, I went back to it is out of necessity. Like free, uh, freelance for me kind of dried up, and it happens. Right. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And especially like with movie stuff, like it, uh, it, it disappears for a good three to four months uh, in winter, uh, like around December, yeah. January, yeah. like it really slows down. And I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't save for it. So I, was in, uh, real I hate situation. when that happens. Yeah, yeah it kind of sucked. The well <laughs> but, dried <you> know, up. <laughs> yeah, well dried up. Nothing's really coming in. Um, and, and, you know, and it's it's no one else's responsibility but yours. You know, you can right. go, you can bark up trees all you want, but it's no one's obligated to give you tasks. So, right, exactly. Um, it started looking again. That's, awesome. that's the main well, reason. So we got, uh, we got about uh, maybe, all right, by the way, this is your half hour mark. Oh, okay, good to know. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to, like, noodle. Yeah, I know. So this, yeah, 30, 30 <laughs> minute and now... Uh, you know, depending on your schedule and, and what you want to do, we can go over by a little bit if you want to. It's completely up to you. So okay, let's we'll... treat this. Uh, let's treat this thirty minutes as like, um, let's get the sculpt done, and then um, I'll get it get it over into in the key shot just to do some quick renders. Sweet. Okay. That's, awesome. That's my plan. And then we'll um, we'll quick fire some of these um, some of these yeah. uh, questions. Cool. Okay. So, uh, what do you usually use for painting? Um, so, like the um, 
the Evolve character that I had on the banner, the one on the right hand oh, yeah. side. Do you remember that one? Yep. Yep. The, so what did you use for um, painting on that one? That was all poly paint. Poly paint. All yeah. poly paint? Oh my god. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. No. Well, it's... it was just all yeah. It was all ZBrush. No, that's uh, there was a different workflow for the actual um, in-game assets that like okay, all gotcha. monsters and stuff. Right. That um, was just the like, concept, right? Yeah. When I was there, I was I was doing like initial concepts, and then we would run things through uh, like the production pipeline. So it would I would model it and texture it and stuff. But then there was a whole nother like uh, revamp session like that was done without me. Like I wasn't there at the time and it was another group of character artists that kind of took things and, and ran with it and made things better. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, so poly paints. Awesome. Um, actually, if you go to, um, if you guys check out Kurt's gum road, uh, I think you have some poly paint stuff on your gum. Oh, road, yeah. right? I do. Yeah. It's a free one. Um, cause I did it for pixel logic, uh, at CTN. They wanted a poly paint demo. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, we like how you poly paint and you have like this method and it's really just using masking, um, to, to control where things go. So if you're familiar with like painting miniatures, like Warhammer figures, it's very much the same. It's, it's, that's how I've done most of my stuff. That, do, wait, did you used to paint Warhammer figures? Not really, but that's how I like to pretend. It's a, no, it's okay. Because I did, I did that for like, I don't know, like three or four years when I was back yeah. in early high school. I have a bunch that are just unpainted because, uh, like, me and friends, like, we're planning on really getting into it, and then, like, we get broke. Right. We didn't, have money to, <laughs> didn't really have money to do it, and then, you know, we're all, like, kind of struggling with right uh, uh, work time and scheduling yep. and stuff. So. Real life get, kicks back in. You're like, oh, yeah, man, I exactly. can't spend my, my uh, paycheck on Warhammer 40,000 figurines anymore. Yeah, exactly. And then, <laughs> so... I have a bunch of unpainted ones, and then there's like a bunch from uh, uh, War Machine too that I have. Yeah, yeah. My good my times, wife, man. Yeah, my wife uses them as a uh, points of reference. You know, like I'm telling her, like oh, I want to get such and such. I think this would be really fun to do. You know, some other hobby basically. Right. She's like, is this War? Is this Warhammer again? I'm like, no, no, it's totally not Warhammer again. <laughs> Shut up! No. Yeah. <laughs> I can think of different yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah are you gonna commit to this one? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I just did a. Um, uh, uh, you remember Gene Steelers, right? Say that again. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you remember Gene Steelers from Warhammer Forty Thousand? Oh yeah, yeah. So I did. Um, I did a big redesign of Gene Steeler uh, in ZBrush. Oh. That was that one. That one was fun, man. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. Um, yeah, okay, it's. I love that world. It's it's especially the Skaven. I loved the Skaven. Oh, that's in, the in little Warhammer. rat dudes. Yeah, the rad dudes. Yeah, those guys are awesome. I never got into 40k. I, oh, I was dude. doing the. You probably yeah. shouldn't because it's a whole other abyss of. Yeah, dark I just don't look. I don't look anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. how do you feel about people watching too many tutorials instead of just playing with ZBrush? Hmm, oh man, I, I can. I have a lot to say about that. Oh, um, interesting. A lot, okay, a lot of good. And, and and bad so i i am victim of that so when i was playing around with music production like as a hobby i realized after a while that i was spending a lot of my time and money on buying tutorials sound kits clips uh you know effects, brush packs brush packs all that nonsense yeah and it wasn't nonsense it's all great it's just yeah. i never made anything i just kept like accumulating <laughs> like it's gonna help me yeah uh, hoarding then, yeah i was hoarding i was hoarding so i think that that hoarding mentality is really really dangerous and it's very easy to fall into um especially when you're at that uh that stage of like well i want to learn and i want to get better yeah um so i think that i'm not i'm not saying that any of it's bad i'm saying it's it's definitely a uh it's a trap that you can put yourself in very easily right just be careful and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At a certain point, you have to stop and you have to just make something. And the reason I got to, to doing what I'm doing now is I had limitations. I had not only time limitations, but tech limitations and financial limitations. So I had a laptop that could only run so fast with certain um, uh, amounts of geometry. Right. And I had uh, a limited amount of money for software. So I bought one program and that was ZBrush. And I spent a lot of my time figuring out how to do almost everything in it 
mm -hmm. so that I didn't have to rely on other programs like from Autodesk or whatever else. Right. Um, and so at a certain point, that's a healthy way to work where you're you're just working with what you got. And yeah, some of the sometimes the um, the best pieces that you turn out is from a limited palette, right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. And it's it's um, and if you find that you're struggling, you're like, no, this isn't working. Like if I just had this other tool. Well, at that point, honestly, you're making excuses and you're procrastinating. Um, you just have to you have to make something, you know, and I've been doing that lately, too, like with my own uh, personal projects. I'm like trying to find uh, companies or people to work with that can help or I've been putting things off here and there. And I'm like, you know what? I need to just make something like I'm I'm procrastinating. There's a lot of forms of procrastination, and that's either from fear or uh, fear of failure or fear of uh the uh, dedication and time it's going to take, you know, there's a, there's a slew of reasons why we stall. Right. Um, but I think that while all that education is very helpful, it's got to get put to use. <clears throat> and um, sometimes, sometimes the education out that's out there is, is uh, it's a, I think that there's a lot of fluff out there. Um, and there's a lot of like repetition, like you'll, you'll watch from one, one person, like how they do something. And then you pick up from another artist and they're like, Oh wait, this is exactly what so-and-so said. <laughs> <laughs> so at a certain point, like you are missing out on just finding these things for yourself. Right. Uh, a, an artist that I really like Ashley Wood. Um, he's not in the game industry necessarily, but you know, he does his collectibles and comics and stuff. Um, he's been asked a number of times, like why he doesn't, put things out like why don't why aren't you doing tutorials on your ink work or your painting and he's like because then i'm robbing everybody of the experience of learning right you know and and i i totally agree with that to a certain point like i think that there's certain things that you're just you're gonna lose and you're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna experiment uh, experience the uh, discovery and that's right. a big part of what makes this so enjoyable you know, that's like I point, sit down yeah. and I like like today, I had no idea what I was going to be making today. And I'm, I'm having a really great time not only talking with you and and sharing all this stuff, but like I had no idea what I was going to sculpt, you know. So then there's that element of surprise in, in your own like work habits. Like, I don't know what I'm going to make today. Let's, you know. And so like that's part of the, the, the fun and the journey of, of under what, pressure. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's and that's why I love personal art so much is like, yeah. Not just because like I get to do whatever I want, you know. It's, it's like I don't, I have no idea what is gonna come out, and that's part of what I'm enjoying. Yeah, and sometimes you need that pressure, right? Like it, not just exactly. just like oh, I'm just gonna fart around in ZBrush today. It's more like Dude, oh, yeah. I've got to go teach a bunch of people. I better like uh, better make something kind of cool at least, right? Yeah, no, totally, <laughs> totally. Like with personal projects, like I'm trying to do collectibles and that kind of thing. I've been stalling on that stuff because I don't have a deadline. I have mm -hmm. nobody that's wait, waiting for anything. And I'm like, the designs have to be perfect. So nothing is getting done. Right. And I need, and I need to just like finish something. So <laughs> moments like this where it's like, okay, uh, it's a bit of a reminder to myself, like, okay, I, I can actually finish something if I, if I, you know, put a restraint on myself mm -hmm. and I um, buckle down and, and, and do it, then yeah, something's going to come out. It's going to get done. Yeah. Um, that was kind of a tangent, I guess, from the, the online education stuff. But right. yeah, I think mean, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, no, it um, makes it makes total sense, man. Total sense. Yeah, and that's like um, uh, uh, Darth Beatty has just said that Gareth Beatty, um, he uh, he he does some uh, some streaming too. But like that's kind of mm -hmm. the same thing for me, uh, and why I stream and work because it right. really like if you have people like hanging out with you like. You know, that's almost setting up your own deadlines, you know, and like oh, totally. people are watching you. Yeah, you better make something cool, you know, <laughs> yep. yeah, you, yeah, you got to put on a show. Right. And right. Then, and there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot that you gain from that. Like I I've only done a few streams um, on my own, like when I was still using like live stream and I loved it for that is because it it forced me to get something done that night. Mm -hmm. um, and I pulled away from it just because I got. Um, I, I just got that feeling like, okay, well now I don't know if I'm doing this for me anymore, or if I'm doing this for the show of it, right. you know what I mean? And then I just wanted to pull back for a bit and just make things at a really slow pace. And now that it's been a couple of years, I'm like, okay, 
Ready? I haven't really done anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, anytime that you want to uh, come back and hang out and feel the pressure to make some cool uh, stuff, you're you're more than welcome to uh, oh, do awesome. a do a second round, man. Good. Yeah, well, finish some more things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, hey, Brennan, I gotta finish some stuff. Can I come hang out on your Twitch page? Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you, got a, you got a weekend? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, man, let's hang out, dude, for sure. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, bu- 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 all right, so um, quick fire. How long do you spend on an average portfolio piece? Um, I would say if I can't get things blocked out in an evening, um, I'm going to lose interest pretty quick. Okay. So I need, I need to move really fast. Um, that's just how I end up developing things. Um, I, I would say like for a portfolio piece, I don't always sit down with that goal of like, okay, this is going to be a portfolio piece. But if it's something that I'm really enjoying and I naturally spend more time developing it, then it, uh, then I end up putting a little bit more time into it and it becomes like a couple of weeks uh, or a number of weekends mm-hmm. uh, of me developing it. Um, I, I, it's very rare when I have those pieces where I'm just, enjoying it so much and i'm not bored of it yet like i get i get bored pretty are you are you bored of this guy yet not yet no i'm i feel right now um i really like him but i feel that pressure to uh make him something cool i think it's because you got a bunch of people watching you like live that that may be the pressure that could be (laughs) (laughs) but um i don't know it doesn't i don't feel that pressure right now i'm not sure exactly what the number is but i'm I I feel that pressure in myself to like uh, finish it more because again like I know that I get bored so it's not gonna get done after this stream I'm probably not gonna come back and like finish this because there's so many other things going on and I want to finish it you know like I want to make sure that it's cool and right that's that's where that pressure like usually comes from is like right um, beating my brain <laughs> to the punch you know. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, dude, we're totally done with that. What more can you add? I'm like, no, 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 it's not done. Like, yeah, but you could just go back downstairs and watch TV. I'm like, oh, I could. Yeah. Right. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Daredevil's on, man. Come on. <laughs> like, oh, brain, brain. You. Vikings, dude. The dude Vikings is out. Come on. <laughs> really? That's okay. awesome. All right, you win. <laughs> so, uh, official answer would be uh, it varies. It it varies. Yeah. Um, I would say a, a couple weekends. Uh, like full time for something that's like really done done right like that that's as much time as like i think something would really need for me to get awesome. developed um so what uh would your typical poly count be for uh the head or the whole creature if you're doing just concept design oh just concept design um so that's just straight up high poly sculpting yeah um shoot i've had some things go uh, like a hundred mil. What, dude? To, yeah, your computer to... didn't fry itself. No, no, because with ZBrush, you need to have uh, in order for it to to function properly, you need to have a bunch of sub tools. So things get split up. Uh, so more sub tools, the better. Yep. Good. Yep. Okay. Good. To, good. Good. Damn. Good to know. Awesome. Yeah. And then, so what about for um, for like a if if you were to turn this into the full game model. Where would you consider uh, a decent poly count uh, to capture everything that you would need to for this guy? Um, I think the most that I've gone for that is like around 60 mil, maybe. That's been the highest. No, no, um, the the actual in-game uh, model. Oh, the in-game, the in-game yeah. model. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because like the, uh, the high poly, I mean, you can make that pretty dense, but for games, sometimes it's just not necessary, right? Because you, yeah. you can cheat it a bit with texture res. Um, I always try to stay around ten to twelve uh, thousand polys, depending on like what the engine can support. But um, yeah, again, I think that one varies too. Yeah. It, it depends on the game. Like that's the that's the big dependency is like the game itself. Right. If it's um, mobile or what platform is it on? You know, is it? Yeah. Is it yeah. Um, stylized? Is it realistic? Like that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Um, so is it a good idea for a guy who would want to be a concept artist to know 2D and 3D or focus on one at the moment? 
Oh man, that is a good question. Um, well, for sure, I would say it's good to know both. Like it's almost a necessity now at this point to know both. Um, but as far as when to focus on things, I switch gears quite a bit. Um, like lately I've been focusing on like using inks in my sketchbook, mm. but I wouldn't say that that's absorbing all my time. Like I'm not like dedicating my weekend to like, okay, I got to finish a book this weekend. You know what I mean? Um, it's just something that I'll consciously think about, but not something that I'm constantly dedicating to. So I think that as long as you're, you know, doing a little bit here and a little bit there, then you're making progress, but that's just me. Some, some artists work better when they just shut the door and focus for like a weekend, you know? Yeah. And then they come out and they're like, I, I've done it, you know? And I, and I understand. <laughs> it's alive. Uh, yeah. It's like, I've never had that. I've never, um, flourished in that way. Like mm. if anything, it just, it, I burn myself out that way. Yeah. So that's, this is not how I work. Um, but. Well, we all say, work differently though. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So I think, I think that um, for me, uh, and, and no matter what you end up doing, it, it's good that you're consciously thinking about these things uh, a lot. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it starts to become more of a lifestyle in a way right. where you're just always thinking about how you would execute something in ZBrush. How would you make that? You know, how would, how would such and such move? Or... It's a blessing and a curse, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just found myself doing it because of my obsession with ZBrush and, yeah. and, um, and then it's just, you just don't leave it. Like it's just always there. Right. There we go. Um, if the, you need to do hair hips. or fur, how would you, how do you, you usually approach hair or fur? Uh, it really depends on the end result on, um, on what I'm attempting to do. Uh, if it's going to be baked in as a normal map, then I just deal with, uh sculpting it in mm -hmm. uh if uh oh what's happening here uh, don't forget to I save should... by the way yeah <laughs> save 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 <laughs> oh man yeah as soon as you have that moment of like wait a minute something's yep. not right yeah something's really so hair depends on uh the ultimate output right you want to know yeah. what the end yeah. game is going to be uh before you end up doing all that time and effort in something that's not even going to be used Exactly. Yeah. So I think about how it's just going to be used. Because that's going to um, end up dictating your whole uh, the process of creating it, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Like if I know that I'm going to, uh, if I if I know that I don't have uh, cards available for the textures. Yeah. And we and we have alphas in the engine for whatever reason, um, then I know that I'm just going to. My only option then at that point is to sculpt it in. Right. So then I'll I'll work with it in that way. Um, and then if I know that, yeah, like if I have a little bit of both or, or there's more options, then and I can use cards mm -hmm. uh, with Alpha. And I, I'll do a little bit of sculpting and I'll do right. hard work at the end. And, I, and when I do the sculpting, I'll factor in that, okay, I need places to hide cards in the texture with the overlapping geometry. You know? Right. So that way I'm not um, hating my, myself my past self in the future. Like, <laughs> I know, right? Why did I plan for this? <laughs> Why would you think of that? Oh my God, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, I'm, really... I'm, I'm constantly making my future self mad at that. <laughs> yeah, uh, here's the tip of the day. Don't piss off your future self, okay? Yeah. Try Make not to piss easy. him off. Or her <laughs> off, either way. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it really depends on the the final output, right? Which will dictate how you're going to go about doing it. Cause there's yeah. a bunch of different ways. So, and if you go about doing it the wrong way, you're going to shoot yourself in the face. Yeah. So to, to quickly be more specific though, cause I'm, I'm sure they're, they're hoping to hear more of like, how do you sculpt it or how artistically, how do you execute that? Mm -hmm. um, I use a lot of the clay buildup and I also use the weave brush and then I smooth things out a little bit um, with like a very low Z intensity on my, on my brush, on my smoothing brush. And I'll do a lot of sketching as well with Damien Standard and just kind of uh, go across the surface and create these weaves here. Uh-huh. And I'll go over that with the weave brush to create, like, fibers within those chunks. And it's just a matter of, like, kind of... I don't have enough geometry here to make it right. legit looking. But you kind of get the idea. Like, it's starting to look... The weave more. brush, huh? I actually never even used that brush. Yeah, I use it for anatomy too. Like at the start of this project, I started uh, with the weave brush on his back. Like I started pulling things around. Interesting. Like, yeah, so like I'll use it here for anatomy. Um, let's kind of hit a few spots. 
And then I'm, again, I'm using uh, smooth peaks. Right. We'll just hit these areas here. And then oh, that's have cool. Stretchy tendons. And then it's just a matter of taking like uh, the damn standard brush and creating some more. It creates nice, fun, happy accidents. Then, yeah. Exactly. Dude, that's how I work. I'm all about creating happy accidents. Or yeah. I've always referred to it as a relationship with the tool, where I know what the tool is going to do, and I let it present ideas to me. There you I, go. I like that I'm better too. It's like yeah. <laughs> like you're pl planning on doing it, not like, oh, yeah. I, I kind of suck, and that that worked out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's essentially what what uh, what I'm getting at is, it, it, I'm doing it intentionally. I'm intentionally making um, happy accidents. Right. Oops. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think that uh, late thirties is too late to get into ZBrush as a professional uh, level? I don't see why not. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't see a whole lot of of uh, older folks in the industry. It seems like a younger folks industry for some reason, which has me kind of worried because I'm like, well. Where am I going to go, or, or am I supposed to be doing something else at this point? Um, but I've I've worked with a number of people that are in school or just starting out, and no, it's not too late. It's I don't think it's ever too late. Art isn't really one of those things where it's like it's it's not like a sport, right? Like, well, they're in their mid twenties now, so we should pass your prime, bro. <laughs> yeah, like that doesn't happen. I mean, right. um, I mean, it's art, no. right? Like, yeah. so it's it's about what your mind and exercising your mind, so. Yeah, exactly. That's so not... I, I, I don't see an age limit to it at all. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, do you have any recommended um, anatomy courses? Um, none that I... I mean, I can't say that I've taken any personally. I can recommend uh, individual artists that... Uh, like Charles Hugh has uh, workshops, I think, with Nomon. He's the one that taught me anatomy. Um, also Steve Hampton, hmm. uh, I would also recommend his book. Um, I'm gonna put him like right on the edge of this thing. And let me think, I'm trying to remember like if I, if I have friends too, that have gone and taken some, some good anatomy workshops, but I'm sure like, I don't know, like, I think you could probably recommend some too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, definitely. I mean like anything Scott Eaton or, yeah, right. Right. You know, so I, I love Scott. I'll, I'll plug him anytime I can, man. He's a good guy. And you know, he does awesome work in ZBrush, right? Like it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's good. You know, you can't really, you know, there's not yeah. much, but I haven't, that, so. I haven't been able to take his workshop. But I really want to. Yeah. I want to too. I definitely <laughs> want to one of these days hopefully he'll, he'll get his um he'll get his uh website launched here pretty soon oh yeah um so how many brushes do you currently have hot keyed none actually really how do you switch you just use key commands yep yep i'm just all keyboard commands oh uh, um, look you're that kind so of guy I, yeah i just have the alphabet memorized at this point that's <laughs> it's about time it only took you what 30 some odd years <laughs> yeah exactly uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just um, that's I, I it, it happens slowly because mm -hmm. I mean ZBrush didn't have all this stuff initially, and as they added more and more things and more features, like I just adapted them. Yeah. Um, and and so then it, you get to a point where you're like, oh wait, I know all of these. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and that's how I that's just how I work now. But it also comes in really handy when you're doing um, presentations and stuff like around mm -hmm. uh, places that isn't your own specific work uh, you know workstation that right, way right. you can take it and, and be successful on whoever's right. computer you're at right yep and that's that's one of the main reasons behind it and and with teaching as well like you know i didn't want to like come in and be like all right so i'm going to teach you zbrush but i got all these plugins and hotkeys that make it usable <laughs> yeah know? yeah right <laughs> yeah so, just uh um, put in these plugins and you'll be badass like me yeah i, I mean i've had <laughs> those i've had those teachers and it's really frustrating because you you don't yeah. actually learn what you're hoping to learn yeah um you learn what it's like if you have all those things um so that's that's been my main reason for just working with what i got what's here cool Yikes. he's got a knee problem <laughs> <laughs> uh somebody said he's missing a butt crack too a design that's that's what I was saying. I was like, hey, you know what? An alien may not have a butt crack, and that's totally fine. Maybe his kinda, crack is, you know, non-existent. Yeah, it kind of stretches over like a skirt. Yeah, maybe it's a crack flap, you know? 
<laughs> it's in there. Oh, wait. Actually, we do kind of have something going on here. We can... I don't know what your stream is rated, but... <laughs> uh, we'll go We'll go PG-13. It's fine. All right, good. <laughs> Save this guy. Uh, oh, if you want to be... Su- on time, by the way. Uh, Sorry. You've got two minutes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, whenever, whenever you're, you feel... Yeah, it's okay. it's it's about it's about then. So whenever whenever you feel comfortable. Okay, I want to get a few more of these ideas in first. And okay. Then we'll, should we leave yeah. Should we leave you alone for a second? And we'll have no, like no, no, quiet no, time. No, keep, no, keep going. Okay. Uh. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> That's all sarcastic. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Oh, no, it's it's totally fine. <laughs> this is what, this is, um, yeah. If you want to be successful in this job, this line of work, do you have to live in California? I definitely think that it helps, uh, unfortunately. So when I left the L.A. area, I noticed that uh, less offers came my way. Um, I think that people figured I was busy in the Bay Area and that it was more difficult uh, to get me to to come down. Um, So that's just my personal experience. Uh, it, it's been more challenging, mm. um, especially like for certain events, uh, get togethers, meetups, all that stuff. Uh, you miss out on that. And that kind of sucks. Yeah. But I don't think that it's it's a it's a deal breaker. No, I mean, shoot, we're, I'm working with a guy who's uh, from Brazil. And I think he just relocated to Canada. I'm not quite sure. But he's another character artist we work with. And I don't care about where he's at. You know, right. he's doing cool stuff. Um, yeah. So much of this can just be done online now. I mean, it's not necessary, in my opinion. But there's benefits to being where the industry's at and where what's going on. You know. Right. So it, it's not it's not a um, prerequisite. Um, no. It helps. Uh, yeah, it helps being in the same area as people that you're working with, mostly just for relationship building and maintaining like contact right if you can do that successfully from afar then cool you know but it's not you know it helps to be here yes but it's not a not a prerequisite i think um all the we're gonna have an influx of uh, population in in california now (laughs) (laughs) shit kurt said i have to live in california (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's really expensive. Don't do it. Save yourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really, really easy to move out of California. Really, really tough to move into California. I never thought about that. I mean, yeah. born and raised, so I'm like privileged that way, I guess. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of our our backup plans. It's like when this when this gets too expensive and we can't keep doing living this lifestyle, um, like. I want to just go freelance and just live somewhere really cheap up in the mountains. <laughs> if that's possible, I don't know if it is. But yeah. Well, I mean, if you got internet, really? That's uh yeah. you know, and the contacts, right? And people right, know yeah. where to where and how to find you and know that you're available for work. Shit, yeah. then you can go anywhere you want, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah, hey, I'm thinking about um I love to live in like Jamaica or something, you know. Ooh. Yeah, that'd right? Be cool. And then just like Digitally commute, you know, just telecommute. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> Digi- I like that digitally commute. Well, VR, <laughs> yeah. VR is going to be big soon, so you know, you never, you never know. Yeah, uh, yeah no, that's that's true. <laughs> You're in the room now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's that's kind of a big. Um, that's a lot of up, uh, a lot of work to get to that, you know. But yeah, for sure. Whoops, for sure. So you're just using the curve brush, uh, the uh, tube, curve tube, curve, curve tube, uh, curve tube snap. Yep. So it'll it'll follow the surface, and then one of the things that I've done is uh, I've taken the uh, settings for it under stroke, and I've turned lock start and lock end on. So as I'm pulling it around, it doesn't, you know, tug on the, right. the end point. Makes it a lot easier to get interesting shapes. Now, did you have this idea that you were going to do this when you were creating those shapes on the helmet? Uh, yeah, when I put the tubes on there, uh-huh. the cylinders, I was like, alright, I'm going to put like wires and stuff. That's awesome. I like wires. Wires are good. Instant, like, extra um, shadows and shapes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
which we all know makes your um, art better, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's an instant, instant win. Right, instant win. You're like, oh my god, look at all those shadows and shapes. Oh my god, that, that must be amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I, I just can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like as soon as you put like some lighting and stuff on it, it'll. And you just kind of sketch down here on the surface, and then I'll like grab one end, pull it through, and you can see like it's starting to wrap. Happy accidents again. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm all about the the working relationship with my tools. <laughs> yeah. Work with them, not against them. Yeah. But you have to spend enough time in the program no. messing up before you know how they actually work, you know? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I'll just pull these together. I'll just hide this kind of in here. This is what I do. I hide things. <laughs> yep, yep. We'll just We'll just edit this part out. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one more here. Oops. And then I'll throw this in Keyshot just to get a quick render out of it. Uh, Save it. Save it. Oh, great. I got your back. Great idea. <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> Save it. <laughs> Save. Where is my brush? Let's grab this one. Usually it's always up in the quick save thing, but I didn't see it. Oops. Get it. Get it. There it goes. Go. Whoa, that's not. Whoa. Really good to uh, we can either go with it or just, I don't know. That's a bit noisy. I love how it's twisting around stuff. Yeah. Though. It reminds me of um, Weeping Willows. Yes. Oh, wait. Let's take this. Yeah, I love these brushes, man. Like I was geeking out on this feature when they introduced it uh, right. during our during our like uh, beta testing. Uh -huh. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna make so many tentacle monsters now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's all you're gonna see from Kurt for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I was like, this is perfect. Oops, it's clipping. It's like I spent all that time sculpting anatomy, and now I'm just you're just covering it up. With hoses. <laughs> you never know though like yeah you, you got to have the good base to start with right if you had yeah crappy anatomy uh, underneath then it would be oh yeah i was i was showing my students that i was like so we're, we're doing a, a creature character that has like clothing and props and stuff and i was like um telling them how you know or showing them how much time i spent into the anatomy on on a past project and mm -hmm. i'm sure it seems like kind of a waste to some of them too because it's like man you sculpted the fur and you covered all that with pants. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to be sure this is the character that I want to make, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's how it worked out. Well, you have to be able to, what do they say, kill your darlings, you know? Oh, for sure, yeah. That's something I'm still trying to get better at is, like, I'll invest all this time into an area that's going to get covered, but I need to in order to, like, extract shapes off of it or, you right. know, whatever. Uh, and then it just sucks to, to get rid of, like, all that work that you did, but... Um, yeah, that's part of, it's part of it. Yeah. That's the life of the digital artist, man. Yeah. That's just how it works. Yeah. So then, uh, what I like to do before I, I take all this into key shot is, um, I'm going to get rid of this ground plane here cause I just use it to snap to the surface mm -hmm. and I'll check my perspective on this and I'll bring the uh, cube all the way down and I'm going to just create some asymmetry out of these. Uh, wires as much as I can anyway for this. Uh, so you just split them off into a, their separate um, yeah, sub tool? Yeah, they're their own sub tool and I can take move uh, topological with mm -hmm. no symmetry. That way I don't have to deal with masking and I can just start pulling some of this around just to get some kind of motion out of some of it. And I can also just hide certain parts of it and it won't be too visible that I'm that I'm intentionally like just cutting wires, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Um, sorry if this is running too long. No, man, it's uh, it's it's up to you, man. It's up to you. So I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll take the uh, select instead of select rectangle when I'm holding Control Shift, I'll use lasso, and I'll just like grab a clump of these. Yeah. I'm gonna get rid of this one too. And. 
and I just go through and do like some delete hiddens on this. <gasps> you deleted it? I just delete it. Oh my god! <laughs> Talking about uh, killing your darlings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's just all chunked into little pieces and. That's cool. We can even do that on like one of these sides here. We'll see how this works. Oh yeah. And then what I would do, um, if there was more time with, with this piece, I would take like some, not end caps, but I would sculpt in some more wires and like you'd have like these exposed pieces. So these are like the, uh, the ends basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the, um, the internal wires, right? Yeah, exactly. I would spend more time with it. And then this is just me isolating the, the remains of this cut and I can just get rid of them like yeah see so it's starting to get a little more asymmetrical down the down the bottom anyway right. it's a starting point and then um we can just play with the weight of some of this stuff and pull things forward or back depending do this all right so then i'm just going to add some subdivisions to it you just subdivided the whole thing a couple times, right? Yeah, but, but, I'm actually and, using dynamic subdivisions and then just applying them. So dynamic subdivisions oh, gotcha. are a way to, yeah, just quickly add like three subdivisions onto things. Got it. And let's do one more thing. And then I'll take it into Keyshot. And we'll save it first. <laughs> <laughs> save it! <laughs> yeah. Lesson of the day. <laughs> if, nothing, if nothing else is gained, always save. Okay, so I'm gonna blur that and then see how this looks when we lower his arms a bit. And let's try to just get one arm kind of forward. Oops. So this is like the last little bit of post that I like to do just to Just to add something unique to it, you know, or just slightly different. Something, something a little different. Yeah. Even if it's really, really subtle, it's it's something that will um, show up when you when you take the renders and you do little, you know, different angles. Um, but hands are the main thing for me, as far as like creating like unique gestures. Like the cheesy way of doing it is, I leave one hand. Uh, just the way it is, and then the other one gets a little bit more flair to it, or right. just, you know, a little bit more expression. Even if it's just something cheap like this. It, that's, like, cheap and easy, right? Like, that's almost like Pose now, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll take this one and I'm looking at it from different angles too as I'm doing this. Like I'm kind of rotating it around and seeing just if that's going to be enough expression or too much or mm -hmm. is it just unnecessary. I kind of like what this is starting to do. Then yeah, from this point on, like I would just start um, sculpting it in this pose. Yeah. <laughs> just keep working with it. Um, so let me save. I'm going to save this as a new version. Called yep. post. So you can always go back to the original. Exactly. Yeah. So now I'll just turn key shot on. Boop, 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 boop. Oh yeah, I use a Mac. Oh, by the way, so um <laughs> that is proof that you can still make good art on a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're more limited, uh or I, I find I'm way more limited with um client work when it's dealing with um pipelines, right? So like I was doing some stuff with liquid development um, and they had a very specific way of working and we had to either make some exceptions or what I ended up doing is uh, I ended up buying boot camp and installing windows and mm -hmm. um, kind of working around it. But I mean, substance has uh, a Mac version. There's a Mac version for just about everything except for just random third party or independent right. developer tools like X normal or whatever. Right. But, 
<laughs> but yeah, that's what that's changed a lot in the last five years, right? It has. It has a lot, yeah. And I just wanted something too um, that was just different at home when I was doing my independent work, and this just separated me more from, you know, your typical pipeline. And it just, again, going back to like the work for uh, or dre dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And I just wanted to make art when I got home. Mm -hmm. So I got a Mac that was going to work really well with Keyshot and ZBrush. And right. um, it just kept me in the a really simple environment. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's... Ooh. Ooh. Look at those shapes and, and, and shadows. Oh my God, <laughs> look at all that. Look at all that texture work. <laughs> it's all done. Yeah. Uh, I just need to know where my... Oh, there it is. I minimized things. Um, I'll throw like a rough plastic on this thing. So now when you, you, when you are modeling this um do you mm -hmm. and you know that you're going to end up going into key shot do you mm -hmm. plan for that when you're actually modeling no i i just know that uh key shot will make things look a lot better <laughs> <laughs> you're like just throw the throw the easy render on there <laughs> yeah pretty, pretty much like i just know that this is gonna this is gonna fix a lot of my problems um was that noman it is like dude Nomen. It's, the, it's the noman back alley no kidding <laughs> that's <Yeah>. awesome <laughs> yeah it comes with uh with key shot so what i do is uh or the ZBrush for Keyshot. Yeah. So I'm using this as the HDR. Right. And we'll get it like roughly around there, and then I'll change my environment so it's like a solid color. And, oops. Stay like that. All right. Um, so I'm going to unlink the material of this, and I'm just going to put a different material on it. I've done this before, but, or something similar. And same with the tubes. You can unlink these. And we can put like a, a rubber on here mm. or something. So this is kind of how I start going into the next step of conceptualizing. Right. And f figuring out um, just how uh, how the breakups are going to work. Right. So you can start uh, to get... Look at that instant, insta-sexy. Yeah. It's... Why aren't you rotating? I'm trying to get the lights to rotate. I think you're too used to um, <coughs> substance painter. Yeah, right. I'm using the wrong <laughs> yeah, right. I hate that, man. Going from like moto to zbrush to substance and yeah, key shot, yeah. you're just like ah. Oh. Yeah, it. It's funny. Like I, I'm constantly doing that. I thought like a long time ago, like maybe there's a point where where you you don't feel. Or, or, or you stop forgetting your hotkeys, like as a professional. Like, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a that's, constant. That's like a bartender forgetting his drink recipes, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So with like a little bit more time, um, and and just texturing and all that stuff, and more planning in, in mm -hmm. ZBrush, like I would, I just invest more time into into the character and and then of course more time into the lighting and rendering but for the most part it, it, he's at that point where it's just like this needs that last like 10 percent of right. work you know it's just to just to develop it um sometimes i don't use these hdr sometimes i'll use the studio lights mm -hmm. uh i'm pretty lame this way where i'll just use the startup one the default this, well, there's a reason why it's the startup one. It still looks good. <laughs> yeah, I, I do a little bit of modifying where, like, I'll take the uh, contrast and start yeah. cranking that up, and we'll get like some sharper lights here and there. Nice. Um, I'll bring the brightness way down. Not that far down. You're up, not right there. But yeah, I just I play around with this kind of stuff. I I will say I don't have the upgraded version here, but I have it at work. The um, Keyshot Pro. Mm -hmm. It's to it's totally worth all the extra money. I mean, just the fact that I can like edit this HDR in here with more than just sliders, but actually dropping pin lights and color adjustments and stuff. Mm -hmm. It saved me so much compositing time. Yeah, right. Um, it just makes it so easy. Like I highly recommend it if anybody's on the fence with that with that upgrade. Yeah, or um, or you can go to um, the ZBrush Summit and hopefully win it in a raffle like I did. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That was super handy. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah but yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, yeah, I do need this. <laughs> I need it in my life now.
Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I love this program. So I, I have, uh, I have it mostly open just so that I can see my progress on the sculpt mm -hmm. so I can get a sense of, uh, how it's looking and, and if these shapes are reading okay, or if I've just completely cluttered it up, but, right. um, yeah, I I really enjoy this this add on to ZBrush or this plug in to ZBrush. Do you ever the use do you use um in the pro, do you use the adding geometry lights and stuff? I do. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I'll I'll that's another thing I can I could quickly do here where like I'll use um I really like this Nomon back alley. It just has really nice color and light to it. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> sometimes I just want like a front light. You know, and I want to use its HDR lights as like a, a, a backlighting. So um, what I'll do in ZBrush is actually add uh, like a plane. So I'll append a plane 3D. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I guess you could do it that way too, huh? Is there is there another way that I'm not? I don't oh, know I was uh, like in uh, so in the pro version. Uh, oh, so you're oh. talking about like adding um. Uh, that as a light, right? A light source. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't have the pro version here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to upgrade it at home. So this is how I do it when I'm at home. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just throw this like up here or something. This is gold right here, guys. By the way, if you if you haven't used this tactic, freaking awesome. So then I'll just name this uh, light plane so I can see it. Well, nothing's really named right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So yeah. Then once I take. Yeah, save it and then uh, take it back over <laughs> to Keyshot. Boop -a -doo -doo. All right, uh, so quick, I gotta... quick question while you're doing this. Are you planning on yeah. doing more Gumroad stuff? Um, I plan on crashing Keyshot. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, as long as you didn't crash ZBrush, you're all right. <laughs> I, I, haven't, um, I haven't made plans because uh, a lot of my time is taken up with teaching uh, right. at school right now. Um, doing so doing free Twitch events, you know, that kind yes. of fun stuff, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just been a while um, since I've I've thought about it, and it's uh, yeah, the whole Gumroad thing for me has uh, slowed down as far as like because I was really ramping up as like a um, like that was like a full time thing where yeah. I was constantly like writing stuff and, and developing things. Well, and the mentorship too that you were mm -hmm. taking yep. part in and yep. Like, um, yeah, it, it was it snowballed for a while, and then I had to pull the plug on some stuff because I ended up taking on more classes at um, at LCAD. Mm. So that's where most of my time has been, um, and I didn't feel it to be very fair to sure. try to yeah to, to anybody involved to try to like spread myself that thin on right. across. All right, do you so see yourself um, reopening a, a mentorship in the in the future? Not anytime soon, anyway. Um, I just don't want to commit to anything just yet or yeah. say anything because I'm just I'm really not sure. Um, I would love to. I, I'd really love to. It's just about finding that time and yeah. Um, well, let's take a poll real quick. Any guys in um, in <coughs> chat would be interested in doing a mentorship with Kurt? Um, just type in mentorship in chat right now. See if let me see. Let's see what let's see what let's see what kind of response we get. <laughs> oh no! Well, there's like nobody. They're like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, putting me on the spot there, and then it's like, oh, turns like, out... Um, that was awkward. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, man. <laughs> oh, so while, yeah. they're, while they're doing that, I'm going to... I'm just going to say, I'm going to take this this light here, or this this plane that I place, and I'm going to apply a material on it that's an actual light. So I'll just use, like, this area light, for example. I'm not seeing it do anything, so... I'm gonna go over here to its material... So all I see in chat right now is is mentorship. Just to let you know. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> so you can see as I uh, turn up the power of this light, um, we're starting to get more of a front illumination to it. Right. And it doesn't matter where I rotate my my HDR because it's going to be uh, keeping that front light on there. So now we we just have like a much more dynamic like lighting scenario and then when i turn the uh color for the background on we can just get a better sense of it oops it keeps doing that and then what we can do is uh select in the material settings here for that light uh, apply to front geometry and back that's fine visible to camera i'm going to turn that off uh, and if you don't like it here in that reflection being able mm -hmm. to see it we can turn that off too 
but it's still lighting everything for us. So that's it's still interesting. Visible in our shadows. Uh, and so now we just have like a much more dynamic shot um, that is using both HDR and our custom light. We can also do something even cooler. Instead, it's black. I've done that before. Let's do something different. Put glass on it. Glass is cool, right? I like glass. Yes. Let's try this one. And yeah, now we're starting to see him inside there a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I forgot you actually had a head in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can also do... I like this material, too. It's kind of a weird one. Uh, thin film looks like a bubble. Oh, see, that's this is why you use key shot. You don't have to have UVs, and you can do awesome, super dope, phantasmical stuff like that. So I, I like to take like this rubber and like we'll put that on here. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. But oh, yeah, that's looks, awesome, dude. It's interesting, right? Because you're starting to get some different ideas out of it. I'm going to go to like a glass here. Maybe we can make these things some sort of translucent hoses. Glass heavy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever know. find yourself um, going, taking it into to key shot, doing material studies, and then having that influence more of the character? Oh, yeah. So at this point, like, I'm already thinking how I would redo this helmet, or I would right. push something around. Um, I could I could show you really quick if you want to see where I would take this. Yeah. Oh, um, if you got the time, man. It's all yeah, to it you. only takes it only takes a second to sure. to do this. So I'll duplicate this subtool, and then I would go to let's go to this one here. I'll hide the original and keep this in Dynamesh. And let's just use like an insert cylinder. And just cut through this whole thing and see what that does. Wait, how did the hell did you just cut that? I'm using uh, Dynamesh, so I'm holding Alt when I uh, place this cylinder. Okay. It's gonna boolean through the whole thing. So what, stretch. So it. you do insert cylinder brush, right? And then mm -hmm. when is it when you drag it out on there, you hold Alt. Exactly. Yeah. And so see how it's inverted. Right. So now, so now it'll create like a, a negative, or it'll cut through. So when you Dynamesh shape. it, it will just. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, ah. now you can create like a full opening. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, dude. All, I'm serious. Like, if you guys have an extra second, um, go in when you're using um, ZBrush, Control and Alt, uh, almost for almost for every single brush, do something different. Play around with yeah. it, man. And it is so that the hidden nuggets of amazingness are. It's just all over the place. Yeah, and there's a lot of that, too. If you hold Alt on a button, it'll operate differently, too. Dude. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to inflate this because it's getting a little weird. All right, so we have this, this general, like, cockpit type thing, and then we have the original sitting here. What I'm going to do is... I'm improvising here. Um, I'm going to select lasso this thing. I'm going to turn transparency on so I can see where this is going. But I'm going to get rid of all this stuff down here on this version of it. All right, so we just have this general shape. Mm -hmm. Do a delete hidden. Let's smooth this out a little bit. Actually, I'm going to take the uh, move move brush and hold alt and just pull out a little bit more of a bubble and you can kind of tell where i'm going with this um and then what i'll do is uh, an extraction off this piece so it has a little bit of thickness or actually we don't even really need to do that if we don't want to but the edges here are really bugging me and that's going to show up in the render so that's usually why i'll do an extraction um so i'll just bring the smoothness all the way up and we'll just get in an angle here where we can see the thickness and do an extract. And hopefully it doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> it 
I just realized there's a really, really large loading bar here. But it should be all right. It's just smoothing things. And what it's smoothing is this edge here. Right. So it's averaging everything out on this new extraction. It's just super thick, but that's all right. I'm not going to spend time like reprocessing that. We'll keep it thick like that. Okay. And because because we can easily change it, so I'll delete the original little garbage mesh here, and then with this one, we can in, do a universal inflate like with the uh, the move transpose line and right click and drag in here, and it'll bring that scale down if we want. But you can see that it's overlapping quite a bit mm -hmm. on itself. So actually, I'm going to get rid of these things too. So let's just see what it looks like with all this. Maybe it's cool. Maybe, maybe it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, right? We're, we're, we're crossing our fingers. All right. So, so that's a beautiful thing, thing about Keyshot Bridge, right? Is that yeah. you can take something over, you shoot it over real quick, and it doesn't matter how many polygons, really. Like this, this, is, this is what, probably like 20 million, something like that? Um, let's see. He's at... 1.2... What is that? Total polys. It's just under a million. Oh, still. okay. So yeah, under a million. But you can be fairly, fairly heavy and yeah. take it over, take a look at things, and then change something, and then hit render again. It just automatically pipes things in, man. It's so awesome for look dev. Yeah, it makes it really, really fast. So I'll apply this like rough, rubbery material onto this piece. Uh, I'm going to unlink some things here in the materials just by unlinking, right-clicking, unlinking material. Uh, and I'm going to apply that shiny, shiny, glossy plastic again. Here it is. Bubbles! <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to go back to the thin film that I liked, and we're just going to apply to this. Yeah, that's awesome. And then you're starting to get, like, you know, it just changes the whole like look of the helmet, and we actually have like two layers to it now too, where we right. have the internal shell and then the outer. That's <laughs> so we, awesome, dude! You <laughs> can play with like the oh, refraction man. index and the thickness, like, and that'll give you totally different colors and looks. Right, I love the two different levels of it. It's yeah. so awesome, yeah. and like you don't know. I mean, you don't know that stuff uh, how that's gonna look until you come in and throw a texture on it, right? Like you would never know that unless exactly. you were able to have this this type of material, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that was a total like happy accident, honestly. Like I did the extraction wanting some thickness, but like yeah. you can see that we're getting getting quite a range of color and variation with this material. Wait, no, you totally meant to do that on purpose, dude. It's okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, you had um, uh, about 25 to 30 people interested in a mentorship. Oh, awesome. So just uh, oh, just to let lot. you know, if you ever consider it, we may have oh, some yeah. people interested. <laughs> well, um, hopefully everybody knows how to find me on, on Facebook yes. and Instagram and stuff. So when that stuff does become available, people can people can jump in. and Absolutely. And, yeah. Alrighty, I think Dude. I'm, I think he needs a lot more time, but I think for, for our stream here, I think, I think he's good hugely awesome man like that was really really awesome to see work live and you know ha having you here man and uh showing us showing us how you do all some of this stuff man is just it's it's a blessing man oh wow thank you <laughs> no thanks uh, for having me man like uh, this is it's a lot of fun yeah man like uh the um the the people here on on twitch and and you know the facebook art community uh just mm -hmm. incredible man it's been so awesome having such a uh, really really good um support you know from yeah, from everybody right. man like i, I just I, I love the fact that everybody kind of sticks together and you know like shares tips and you know really goes out of their way like you are to 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 share the knowledge you know right yeah yeah it's a really really small community you know and uh it's good that everybody looks out for each other and helps out as much as they can. Absolutely. And we can't, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for everybody else too. I know you're not, uh, you haven't been reading chat, but, uh, you know, it, it, people are very, very thankful. So, you know, oh, it's, awesome. it's a big, big, huge thanks for, for taking some of your time out of the day and, uh, and hanging out with us, man, and showing some of the tips and tricks and stuff. 
no, it's my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for everybody for coming by, and, and again, thanks for inviting me. Awesome, man. Yeah, hey, if you're um, in the future, if you're ever interested in in doing another round, you need to actually get some work done. <laughs> the invita- <laughs> the invitation's open, man. If you ever want to come back and hang out. I appreciate it. Awesome. I'm gonna have to take advantage of it then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, um, so just uh, before before we uh, wrap up, I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs. Um, definitely want to give a shout out to obviously Kurt. He's badass. Um, but big shout out to um, Pixelogic and ZBrush. Um, those guys over there are beyond amazing, and their support is never ending. Um, anytime you know people need something from from ZBrush or Pic, you know Pixelogic. Those guys are right there on top of things uh, to to help support and uh, answer questions, man. So big, huge yeah. thanks to um, to Pixelogic. And um, if you guys aren't using the the new ZBrush Classroom uh, website, I definitely highly suggest going and checking it out. Um, even like I, don't know, I was on stream yesterday or the day before, and I was doing some nano mesh stuff, and I was like, oh, I forgot how to do this. So I just pulled up the ZBrush Classroom and. Did a quick search and boom! I had all the um, quick little videos from the Joseph Durst uh, showing oh, yeah. us how to do it. Man, that guy is a freaking nuts. <laughs> yeah, he he's insanely talented with this tool. He knows right. it in and out. It's ridiculous. Beast, man. And they um, are you gonna get a t- are you gonna get a chance to go to the ZBrush Summit this year? I want to try to. I don't remember when it when it is, but um, yeah, that again is one of those things like. Living in the Bay Area, right, makes it difficult yep. to go and do stuff. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's a, you spend all your money on on rent. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this is, this is where it all goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, um, awesome, dude. Uh, so Pixelogic, check them out. Go check out their new um, Z Classroom. Thanks, Marcelo, for uh, throwing that up there. Also, big shout out to uh, Marcelo, my mod. Um, Dude, couldn't be doing all this stuff without you. And a new shout out to Enra, uh, who's Stephanie, who's the new mod, um, who will be helping us out uh, a whole lot more. I think she had to go, but uh, just want to give her a shout out and say thanks for all the help. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you for you guys, man. Like, uh, you know, we wouldn't be doing this. Uh, you know, I, I think Kurt and I would hang out every once in a while and just kind of do some mm-hmm. stuff like this. But it definitely helps to have a really awesome, attentive, and questioning. Um, you know, uh, audience. So the big shout out to you guys. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the love. Um, that, that kind of stuff keeps me and I'm sure Kurt going, you know, when you get good feedback and people that reach out and, you know, tell you how much they appreciate your work and stuff, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, are you okay if I, um, if I announce the next, uh, the next guest, you good with that? You. Dude, How dare you? I, <laughs> you're like, I'm not even off the stream yet, dude. Yeah, Jesus. Already, already showing me the, already showing me the door. I see. I, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, like, hey, um, you're always welcome to to come and hang out too, man. So if um, you know, if you're ever around and, and you see um, uh, we're streaming or anything, def- definitely love to have you to come <laughs> in too. So, um. Awesome. So yeah, uh, it's usually I, we go about um, two or three weeks in between guests, uh, but uh, we had to kind of uh, move the next guest up a little bit uh, because of timing. So the next guest, dun, 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 drum roll, Bjorn Hurry, Mr. Bjorn Hurry himself, the Viking, uh, will be Woo. here on Saturday, the 23rd. Not 3 p.m. Uh, it's going to be 12 p.m. I forgot to change that. So 12 p.m. Pacific on Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, Bjorn Hurry will be here and going to show us some of his mad Photoshop design skills. Um, he's the kind of guy that um, we all drool over as 3D concept artists uh, <laughs> to <laughs> to go and actually go. Oh my God! I want to! I want to! I want to create that model so bad. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, well, thank you very much, Kurt, man. It's been a freaking pleasure having you on, man. And um, if you don't mind, uh, we'd love to have maybe just a couple quick renders uh, of what of you course. did. And we'll put it up on uh, the ZBrush central thread that we have going for the stream here. Um, and, yeah, I'm sure we'll have all kinds of fun stuff in the uh, the YouTube comments and stuff that once we post it. So if you don't sure. mind, if, if that's cool. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, let me get some renders done uh, in the next half hour or so, and then 
Perfect. Shoot him your way. Awesome, man. All right, well, um, thank you very much, Kurt. Miss no, you, brother. Thank you. See you soon, man. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right, guys. Take it easy. Later. Bye.